Christine shoulders are here. Just kidding. They're clothed, everybody. I'm just as disappointed as you. <laughs> it's but a she is possum. wearing a horrendous possum shirt. Yeah, from you that you bought. I me. did buy it. You know, you I one probably for me, one for fund Eva. possums more than anybody else no, on this. You're show. the biggest advocate for possums, and you don't even know. You don't even admit it. I do it. It's one of those things where I. It's out of sheer love because it's certainly not out of understanding. You know, it makes you <laughs> happy. You and for us, not for the animals. To make you, I don't know, I, like gross patriarchy, but you know the saying, happy wife, happy life. I don't, I don't know what the platonic version of that is, but if I keep giving you possum stuff, you're in a pretty good mood, which means ha- I'm in a happy, pretty good mood. Happy partner, happy, howdy partner. Fartner. Ha- happy partner, howdy partner. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right? Anyway. That's what they say. How was your Thanksgiving, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> oh god um hi it's good it was fine it was okay it was great i mean it was fine but then blaze got sick and then leona got sick and then um blaze is just catatonic in bed and i've been just running around um trying not to have a mental breakdown so you know uh, oh i got Where? a weird text on oh. thanksgiving wait i forgot this is what i was gonna tell you i even wrote it in my phone M, I got a manic weird... energy today it okay. is i'm so, i apologize for that um but i can't no, change it no, so no. uh I'll, I'll keep it together so you can be the main character and then we'll swap thank you so much okay here's the text i got this is not a joke on thanksgiving i received in the like in the evening or at nighttime i received a text oh, crap let me find it I, this, I even prepared for this to be my why i drink here it is hello i'm walt's great grandson like okay i'm gonna show it to you without because the phone number's in there too and you know how like sometimes you'll get a text from um like a spam and it's like mm-hmm. let's ride our bikes together okay i don't know i get weird spam texts sometimes right so normally it's like either it's like a green this is like an iphone like someone's iphone sent me this which is Ew. unusual yeah and this is i'll show it to you with i'll try to cover the number so you don't see the number but it basically what? says hello oh, yeah, i'm I walt's great grandson like what and you didn't say anything i think back? i said i think i just like put a question mark on it and then they never responded but like usually if i respond what to those the spam back? ones they write wait back what's like, the number oh. can i text them sure okay. i'll read it to you although what if this is like a listener who what if this is a listener then why who, did like, they have my phone number <laughs> Like, if they found your phone number, then I directly... Like, that's walking right into a trap, isn't it? Can you star oh, 67 man. a text? Maybe just WhatsApp them. Well, no. WhatsApp. That won't work. WhatsApp, WhatsApp. No, that doesn't maybe work. Maybe WhatsApp. I don't... Maybe it will. Does WhatsApp work? Does it show my number? Yeah, I guess it does, huh? Shit. Eva, can you text this number for us? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. I have a, I have a fake email. Can I email a number? No, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll add I them wish to our I had a fake number. So we all. We a, what if we all we go down Google Voice together? Phone number. We we had a Google Voice number in February of 2017. So I doubt that it still exists because I don't think we ever use it. Um. Okay. Oh my God. Eva. Eva texted us one of the things she wanted to discuss as like a business topic is whether we need a business phone number, which is hilarious our business phone oh my gosh so i'm like maybe we uh, do need it just to prank call people order pizzas wait. and also text walt's grandson well obviously okay hang on i'm going on my white pages account also great grandson like what are you talking about could th- could it actually this... be walt from your original your, your i don't LA know home? now i'm freaked now i'm freaked out but also okay. could it be even if it is spam like that's a very weird thing to send me of all people what's the phone number okay Oh, elevator music when you tell it. It's please stand by. We have to step away and go get wine. Answer the door. We just must discuss private things hastily. Thank you for I'm searching. I'm searching. I'm searching. Uh it's a landline. Okay, so this is already old information. From from Huntsville or Decatur. Yeah, I hate so to break you. Know you anyone... I've already done a I've already done a big search online for the number. Um and I, I couldn't really find anything useful. Um, Interesting. 
Interesting. Maybe interesting, I'll type in Walt. I mean, it's probably spam, but the weird thing is it's that they weird. use the name Walt. It's really weird, right? Like, even as spam, it's like, you didn't know what you were doing. This is very specific. Um, oh, my God. Hang on. Okay, hold on. Then if it's just, if it's, uh, I'm But then why I'm didn't they respond? It. Okay. What are you going to say? I'm, I'm Walt's okay. great grandson. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do I say? What do I say? Say, like, say hey, is <laughs> Walt available? I don't know. <laughs> say I, I have the all the money from Walt's will. Do you want it? And then see if they're like, mm. <laughs> I'm the executor of Walt's will. Say that. <laughs> okay, I'm the executor. <laughs> what if this really is the great grandson of someone named Walt, and we're just like fucking with them? <laughs> that would be terrible. Also, by the way, I just wrote I'm the executor, and it autocorrected to I'm the executioner. <laughs> <laughs> now if i received that text i think i would have called the authorities i'm not really sure but i would have been a I, lot more alarmed i <laughs> like that's kind of telling like that does if the, you know i'm the executioner is that what i write do i change it oh, wait oh, i'll write the i'm the executioner send and then i'll do oops autocorrect <laughs> <laughs> I'm the exec uter. Oops. LOL autocorrect. Um is it is it a uh, is it an iPhone or is it showing up? It's between? an iPhone. No, 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 it's Android. See? It's Android. Oh. So maybe they changed maybe they blocked maybe it's maybe I'm it's the spam. It's probably spam. Oops, autocorrect. That's... I'm the executor. Is Oops. is this Walter's family? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> is this Walter's family trying to get a hold of a great grandson? Wow, you <laughs> taking your role yeah. very seriously as the executioner of his, oh my god of his of his descendants will descendants. that feels that feels more lawyery right execution oh no you already said that <laughs> it's oh like oh god. the grim reaper is texting you okay anyway um <laughs> i mean really if i'd received that text i'd be a lot more alarmed <laughs> but also this is a spam ar spam artist is that a word spam right. artist no scam artist i mean they're scam artists so Okay, well, if this is a spam artist, uh, TM, 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 then they deserve to be scared a little bit, okay? So there's one guy who um, tried spamming me, or a spam artist, if that's what we're calling it, and I it is. Uh, pretended I was in the mafia and that he had the wrong guy, and he showed oh, me the yeah. talking to me. Didn't somebody now... also try to spam artist your, your grandparents and say they were like you or something? That was a long time ago, and my grandpa... Felt, did That's not fall scary. for it and pretended he was the chief of police. Um, See, you guys have something. Now you're the executioner. So this is like clearly a family <laughs> pattern. <laughs> well, I told this one guy, he said, hey, I'm uh, something, something, something. I forget what he said, but it was very obvious that it was going to turn into a whole thing. And yeah. I was like, I, I was like, I told Big Tony or something like you got like you owe me money. Or something like <laughs> something <laughs> Big Tony Chocololi. Um And... <laughs> Now, once a week, he sends me... He has not quit. This happened back, like, during... Ew. Like, at least a month ago. Once a week, he now texts me the emoji of him giving me the middle finger. <laughs> oh, <that's it. laughs> my God. That's how you know. That's, that's our, how you know you've really done it. You've won. That's our whole relationship. He goes, I haven't forgotten you, middle finger. And that's... You know it. what the worst part is? Like, that's kind of also our relationship. So I feel a little bit like... That's <laughs> that's a little weird that we're so... That they're so, such similar vibes. Um, I know. I know. But love anyway, and hate, you know, really close together. So, uh, wow. I know. So, um, why do you drink? So that's, oh, because <laughs> I got that scary text in the middle of the night that oh. said, I'm Walt's oh. great grandson. And I was like, uh, okay. And then I couldn't text you because I was like, I have to tell Emma on the podcast. <laughs> so that's... I've just been living with this internal fear, you know? I, it, I mean, yeah, I do actually feel bad if it is Walt's, uh, Grand, a real Walter's great grandson. <laughs> no, too late now. Whoopsies. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay. Well, that's a good reason to drink. That's certainly on brand. Um, yeah, I, I figured. Why, right, I figured it's at least like um, it's content. Uh, oh, I, this is it, what I wrote. I responded, "Walt who?" And then they just never oh. responded. Which I'm like, what kind of spam artist sends you a text to say, "Hey, I'm reaching out," and then you say, "Okay," and then they just stop talking to you. It's like that's. Do you remember the like, time that um, we artist. were together? Do you remember the time we were together and um, uh, we found out my mom was getting scammed, and so we <gasps> oh reached out. Oh my god! We translated the 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 Nigerian, and it said like 
God will curse all of your descendants. And we were like, oh, no, no. but it was it was God. good, though, because because uh, we found out then you reached out pretending it was my mom. And oh, that's right. I reached out, and they had myocardial and then all of a sudden, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, we ended up finding out what he texted my mom, which was another language. And it was I'm cursing your family. And we mm. copy and pasted it to your phone and you sent it back to him and then he sent you the middle Ooh. finger or something then he sent me the middle finger yes that's right no you're 100 right why wow, is that we their like final record. stance the best know, you can I love do it, is I a middle finger like, okay yeah they're like this will get them <laughs> i'm like em and i send that to each other all the time it's not as harmful as you think it is <laughs> i feel like it's um like when you find out what other like curse words and other languages are and it's like oh this oh. is supposed to be really offensive and it's probably like, actually really not em. all that offensive yeah, it's like I the time we if... learned what puta meant, and we were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they think the middle finger is like the the end all of like the yeah. ultimate insult. Um, I mean, maybe if I was seven, I'd probably be upset, but um, yeah. you know, now I just think ah, that's cute. Um, so it yeah. really doesn't have the well. If this guy, he usually sends me middle fingers on Wednesday, so if he says anything tomorrow, really? I'm just gonna yeah, he's really scheduled oh. with it. Um. Um, wow. So, you guys have like a more consistent friendship than you and I have. I know. Again, I like are we I like should be surprised. I I are you <laughs> am I being replaced? Should um, we should I do a full uh like a YA novel about it where I actually start just like <laughs> sending him compliments and then we become friends? Like what happens next? Fuck yes. Fuck yes. A hundred and ten percent. Because as long as yeah, I but get then to they're cash gonna be like when I bring that. him to dinner, when I bring him to dinner, they're gonna be like, How did you meet? And I'm gonna be like, he tried to steal my money. He tried to rob me and get my credit card like, information. It's like a classic hallmark. But I saw something in him. But there honestly, was in his eyes. He was just damaged on the outside. On the inside, I could save him, and I did. Because I'm the executioner, and then the title card girls. <laughs> um, it's I execute be really good. bad vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a misunderstanding. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he's in wow. a silly goofy mood. So these are so oh. great. Uh, good times. I love getting spam, skip, spam, scammed, spammed. Um, it's a good time. So anyway, how are okay. you? And uh, <laughs> I, I don't have really uh, anything as great to follow up with. I just got back last night. Um, I've been gone since. Oh. Are your arms like tired? Second. And that's oh. why we drank. Hello? Thank you, Is everybody. There? Goodbye. <laughs> um, Did I lose you? Is this thing on? <laughs> Did your internet cut out? Something must. You, are you th- going oh, through a tunnel? That's so weird. <laughs> I'm going through a tunnel. Uh, uh, no, I I just came back. I've been gone since um, like the beginning of November. We I it's weird because I came home to me clearly frantically packing and everything before we our flight took off, and I came home to what I remember being a very clean apartment and I was actually in the middle of cleaning. And so I came back to like three week old clean laundry, just a big mountain of it on the bed. So it's like, I happens not, I like, I know that I said on the way to the airport, just the way that this apartment looks, I know I said to myself, this is a future M problem. And now I'm future M and it is. a Oh, I hate being future myself. It's like, come on. Me too. Ugh. so um <laughs> it's not fair anyway now i'm in it's the like, middle of cleaning up past em's problems per usual at least it's clean laundry i mean mine's all dirty laundry so yeah but you know You're what my problem is there. and this is i don't know if this is like um let me count the ways okay i didn't Sorry, i don't know if this is specifically a in a... <laughs> <laughs> is that how that works i don't think so <laughs> If you, anytime you want to just evacuate a conversation from now on, oh, I'm going through a tunnel. I'll be right back. I hit airplane uh, mode. Oh, sorry. Tunnel. I don't know. Bye. Sorry. I, I'm, I'm standing in front of you, but I am on do not disturb. So um, you'll have to talk, talk to me later. Uh, and then I turn around and look at Eva and I go, hey, what's up? And I just, <laughs> just totally block you only. It says delivered quietly. <laughs> it says red. It says red. Um, but also I was going through a tunnel. Oh. Um, I don't know if this is exclusively an ADHD thing, but I, uh, when it comes to folding my clothes, it really is. I know folding clothes is like hard for most people, especially if you have some like neurodivergence. It's like weirdly the hardest oh, task you can know, ever it's, do. It's the worst and I can't do it. And I don't it's do the it. worst, but I've caused more problems for myself because I have to hang all of my shirts. So I can't just like throw them into a drawer. I can't even just fold them and you put them in a drawer. Them? Every single shirt I own Why? is hung. 
because like, we just we live in an apartment we don't have enough room and we share a dresser oh. so um, yeah dressers are hard i just bought two more and i still don't have enough room and to really about them from an, an estate sale so that's my my fault stop it buying, why again more? A lot, that was gonna be why i drink but then walt got involved so i was like well fine um so I was first like, of all i'm gonna tell you if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna keep up this behavior christine i am next what is what do they look like how much did they cost what's the backstory oh, behind them are they haunted they're gorgeous they're gorgeous probably yes is considering i got texts from walt's great-grandson right after i bought them um <laughs> maybe they're connected probably not um no they're beautiful they're victorian they're from like the late 19 or sorry late 1800s um and they're these gorgeous wooden dressers and they one was 82 dollars uh in my bedroom um one was eighty three dressers in your bedroom yep and one like one's like a small one right then one's just like Mm -hmm. my normal one but we don't really have a closet like we don't have you know what i mean we have like the opposite situation our closet is literally like it's it's very confusing and boring but um yeah we we have to share dressers for like all our sweatshirts and clothes um and so we have uh, yeah and so i bought two new dressers and they're Listen, they were cheaper than anything on like fucking Wayfair, but they're beautiful and they're um they're they're a few questions haunt, haunted. Yeah. Oh, and they have little keyholes and they came with the keys. Oh, that's fun. You never right? get the key too. Yeah. One of them has a secret drawer. That one was worth the money. Yeah, it's hidden behind a panel. Super cool. What are you going to put in there? Your my baby? Se- my mini secret. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> my first thought was it was just like, oh, something small. Um, yeah, what are you gonna put you have to put something in there. You can't just like have well, a secret. Oh yeah, but you can't anything. know what it is, otherwise then the secret won't come true. Well, I don't like that. Okay. Well, okay, my other questions. Hmm? What are you using each one for? Like, please tell me the secret panel one is for your coziest PJs. Or Okay, what? this is not this is gonna sound like I'm making it up. I'm not. And I was never gonna tell anybody this. But I'm going to tell but, you. Okay, but you won't you. tell me what's in the secret panel. Okay. Next. No, I'm about what? to. But don't tell. But don't. But I'm only telling you. It's just between us. It's just between you and me. Um. So we have a we have a sponsor, <laughs> which I'm sure you received oh. the same gift basket. Do you receive the gift? <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> yep. And and what today, are you about to tell me? So today we had, uh, so once a month we have people come like help clean the house. Like we have uh, somebody come clean the house. And I was like, well, these, our new sponsor sent us this (laughs) wonderfully amazing, gigantic, glittery gift basket of sex toys and lube and all sorts of stuff. And I was like, whoa. So I put it in my bedroom. Okay. And so I like open it. There's glitter everywhere. But I like open it, whatever. And they're like all over the place because I'm like, whoa. Okay, to be honest, also, my mom was over, and she's like, what is this? And I was like... See, I would have just handed the basket to my mother and been like, happy birthday. But just go I almost did, and then she said, ooh, I could have fun with that. And I said, I'd rather (laughs) jump off a bridge, so I'm not giving this to you. (laughs) Um, And so then I opened it all up, and it was all over the place. And then the cleaners are coming, and, you know, I do that classic mom thing where i'm like should i have to clean for the cleaners otherwise i can't vacuum the floor or whatever mm-hmm. so i just have all these like <laughs> dildos and stuff and i'm like <laughs> oh i'll put them in my victorian dresser so because it's the only empty dresser so i jump <laughs> all in the drawers and um now i'm just afraid that blaze gonna be so like it's oh, your sex good, some more it's now a sex drawer which like was not the plan and um i'm sure it was not the plan of the person in 1875 who built it and <laughs> You don't know that as an they had vibrators piece, but I don't know that. That's exactly right. They could be like, finally, someone living out all my dreams, you know? Um, yeah, it's like, oh, it's all I ever want. Whatever the 1800s version of like a flashlight was, it could have been in yeah, there. You yeah. don't know. Yeah, it could be. Uh, the 1800s. Oh, I don't want to know. When, they had a hoop and stick and their own version of a <laughs> flashlight. I don't want to know like what was involved in the making <laughs> or cleaning of that product. Um, so anyway, that's what I put in the drawer. If you must know. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And I'll prove it to I'm you. I'm not against tell, that. That's fine. I should tell Explays, open the top drawer, see what happens. But he's like very sick. You know so what would be really funny is if over. you had all your... It, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, it'd be really funny if you mm-hmm. had all your sex toys out for display and then in your secret panel was actually like, uh, just like a very tame book. Like just like the most yeah. boring thing. <laughs> My Bible <laughs> like that one you're ashamed of. <laughs> 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 well... 
you know what? I'm glad I asked. You know, everyone wanted to know. Now everyone got exactly the kind it, of answer they were hoping for. It's like I didn't even like it didn't even occur to me that you would ask what's in it. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, because I was like, oh, there's nothing in it yet. I just bought them. And then I was like, wait a second. This morning I literally opened the drawer and went like this and just dumped all of the lube and flavored nipple balm into this drawer. So Allison and I did see the nipple balm and I went. Are we gonna use this? <laughs> I, like, I literally there's... thought I literally thought it was a gift for my daughter because it came and I was like, oh cute, it's all pink. I open it up and the first thing I pull out is like flavored nipple balm and I went, let's go play with something else. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, um, that well, it I really appreciate I do appreciate the sponsor, but also like oh, it was the I, best. It was I'm such not... a fun. It was so fun to open, but also I was like, this. It was very fun to open. To be. I'm also so vanilla that I was like, I, this looks like I'm probably i you know i have some pretty kinky friends so it sounds like this is about to be a, a christmas extravaganza oh for them. that's a great idea my mom yeah. seemed really into it and i'm sure your mom would be too so maybe she's <laughs> gonna hear this sense. and wonder what the fuck i'm sending her <laughs> nothing <laughs> mom you can handle that on your own but my Use friends promo code. Hand, they're, they're gonna get free product mm. oh wow anyway i'm so glad i asked that question i really thought you were just gonna say like oh i haven't figured it out but no, I, I like absolutely it. did not foresee this going this way, but here we are. It's too late. I've said when you want to get rid of it, can you leave the picture of the girl in her hat in there? Oh, genius. I love her. Genius. I'm fucking doing that. In the secret well, trail, that's so smart. I apparently, I, I guess the reason I drank, um, besides having to do three-week-old laundry, is for you. I think uh, congratulations on your secret compartment honestly thank you i never really realized how special it was until this very moment when you had me bring it up so i'm very thrilled um and we're proud. all very excited thank for you. you and now i Try i really hope if positive. anybody else if anyone else has a uh secret passageway sex cabinet sex what dungeon yeah. oh you're you just have oh. a very tiny one currently it's a dungeon it's two inches tall yeah <laughs> it it can grow all right it, you okay. know what it can grow or not a shower you know what i mean Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, let's get into this because otherwise, I really, I feel bad for everybody who wanted a short episode and like, th not that my story's particularly long or anything, but I just haven't seen you in so long and I know we could talk about <laughs> sex, sex toys all day, sex compartments um, for um, quite some time. So, mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, my, um, I have a, a, one, a 101. 101 situation for you today christine Ooh, okay and i kind of i'm digging the 101s because i feel like it leaves a lot of room for banter which we're clearly incapable of so um, yeah. <laughs> this this will give us a prompt since we need we that practice kind of help. yeah um and i th i thought about this topic because i feel like it's not inherently this like scary thing or creepy paranormal thing but um you know i think it's i think it's cool and i've wanted to know so now everyone else is gonna know so this is a, a 101 class on mirrors <gasps> oh fuck yes and people might be like what why well no because i've always scary. heard one of the things i did while i was um at thanksgiving every year i end up cleaning my cousin's room with her and it becomes like a good like 2 a.m hangout where we like watch tv and we both have adhd and so we really thrive <laughs> under like parallel play to like i can't do self-care tasks she can't do self-care tasks so we just I thought do them we were together done talking about sex toys <laughs> parallel my play. cousin please Whoa. okay i mean listen you said <laughs> parallel play and i went what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> no, for anyone wondering, um, parallel play is in, uh, an ADHD method of uh, being productive where you really thrive with a second person there to do the same work as you and it encourages you to get stuff done. So like I and it doesn't have to mean you're both doing the same work, but just to have somebody there to kill the time with you is a huge help. So like mm. I would rather you sit on the bed and like hang out with me and gossip while we're folding clothes and then before i realize it all the clothes are hung versus You're me done, just right. kind of doing okay, it okay that myself. makes total sense um same thing with like studying a lot of people will, like need a second person to like sit and do their their computer work with you so that way you get your work done so i get that anyway yeah we we both thrive with that um and she really needed her room cleaned and it's become this thing where every year i show up and i'm weird but my version of relaxing is like decluttering and like seeing like a big task yeah. that 
where you see an accomplishment That's by fair. the end, a before and after. So it works out well because she needs her room cleaned. I want to clean her room. And we just hang out all night and watch TV and gossip and shit. And um, I was cleaning her room. We found this mirror and I was like, oh, maybe I should put it in her closet. But then I was like, I don't know. But then if it faces the bed, isn't that supposed to be bad luck? And then yes. it kind of got me into this whole, you know, mirror, mirror, mirror thing. So I thought, <gasps> why not talk about it here? Oh, I'm so excited. Mirrors okay, scare me. So, but I love them also. They see. Okay, I wanted to ask what your opinion is on mirrors. Are you all about the superstitions and the? Yes, a little bit. I think that there is a chance that they can open you to. I think just by their nature, they can be. It sounds maybe crazy, but I think they can be portals. They do seem like an, and they give me the same kind of creeps as like um. It's like an equivalent to a doorway, like a, yeah. like a physical doorway yeah. of like, oh, like just an it goes into another space. Point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like both uh, an entrance and a dead end at the same time, which feels odd. <gasps> that's deep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and for my next trick. Oh, by the way, that's my new thing. Now. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I no. don't know. I don't know why, but I've been realizing that really <laughs> like it compared to your usual <laughs> things that you bring to the table. This one I'm actually kind of into. I, I don't know why. I don't know where I learned it from. I don't know if it just came out of my own head. But anytime I'm shifting I'm, gears now, I just go, and for my next trick. <laughs> I really, really actually like it a lot. So um, the, for once, I approve. Do you have a bit that you do? I know we're I do a little bit, but do you have a bit? All the time, but I can't think of, I, I'll probably do it in the next five minutes, and you'll be like, that's the one. It's very annoying, but I cannot just even think about it. General what. derangement is your bit? <laughs> what? me no um you'll probably hear it by the end of the episode probably every listener's another... like yeah it's x y and z and we just don't even notice probably so i know um with allison i have a bit where every time i impulse purchase something when she's asleep when she wakes up i go i've done the unthinkable and <laughs> that's it's a personal favorite because i do the unthinkable just about every night so the unthinkable um, you'd never imagine <laughs> and i act like it's a real crisis i'm like allison I, of course i've done the unthinkable this and time it's it really i is bought an 80th blanket so I don't <laughs> oh know I actually that's pretty bad <laughs> okay anyway for my next act <laughs> here is mirror 101 um i wanted to start with a fun fact because obviously, obviously. Uh, according to the national library of medicine which I love that they're taking advantage of mirror history. Good, good, um, cool. The oldest evidence of human-made mirrors. You want to take a stab at how many years ago the first mirror was? Was it in Mesopotamia? We do in talk. Egypt. We, you know, yeah. it was. We do talk about Egypt for a second. Um, but this was in Anatolia, Anatolia, and mm -hmm, which is now mm -hmm, Turkey. Mm -hmm. Turkey, yeah. And um, which I feel like I've brought up that same area quite a few times in my stories probably you, it's very much like a there. like a like a home of of a lot of i don't know inventions hum <laughs> humanity yeah just mirrors and ghosts humanity so uh <laughs> they the first uh or the the oldest number we can find is roughly around eight thousand years ago was the first man-made mirror um I, I don't know if you like me putting you on the spot like this, but I'm going to try it again. No, I love it. Do you know what the first mirrors were made out of? I feel like I've Googled this before. Um, opal? Seashell? You're, very, you're close. It's obsidian. Oh, okay. Yeah, obsidian mirror. I've heard of that. Sure, sure, sure. Which um, obsidian, which I did not know this, maybe this is very obvious to everybody else, but obsidian is made out of volcanic glass. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, it's like dark, 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 shiny. Mm -hmm. I knew it was dark, but I, I honestly, I know nothing about rock science of like, oh, why is this one this color versus this color? I, I fucking know nothing about that. <laughs> rock um, science. <laughs> or was it geology? I, I really just. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's rock science. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, I, I knew it was dark, but I didn't know what how it got that way. But it is because when lava cools, I guess if it cools at a certain rate, eventually crystals form. But mm. if it cools so fast that no crystals form, you get obsidian. Oh, then it's smooth. Okay, that's cool. I did not know that. So it's very fast cooling lava. 
And uh, obsidian is a rock that is very fragile and the, it fragments easily, which makes it very easy to shape, which is why it was used a lot um, in older times to uh, build things out of or to carve things mm -hmm. out of. So it was used a lot and with a lot of indigenous groups to create arrowheads or weapons mm -hmm. in some way because you can take one rock, hit obsidian rock, and it will carve things away or carve things out of it. Right. Makes sense. Same concept with mirrors. Um they would take the glossier layers of obsidian and stack them on top of each other. Okay. And I think they were like very, 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 exp like that. this is something that's not, was not accessible to anybody, but like the elite, People right? near lava. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like the product of like an actual mirror was not just like a generic, yes. like <laughs> item for families back then. Yeah. I, I yes, it, it, it becomes a very expensive item. It's, was originally obsidian, and then about 3,000 years ago, so the first 5,000 years, obsidian. Things then, were slow going for mirrors for the first 5,000 years. You got slow mirrors start. Are, you know, here's the thing about mirrors. They are all about that long con. They are yeah. here. They said, I've got time. And we're going to We play the long out. game. Just wait it out. Yeah. Just wait it out. Just wait it out. They go, and for my <laughs> final act. And then, they do, <laughs> and and then they, you just have to wait and wait and wait. Yeah. I know. So uh, about 3,000 years ago, mirrors are now appearing in Egypt, like you just said, Mesopotamia, like you just said, and China. Oh. Those are the, you weirdly know. Good for me. I said two some... old places. <laughs> well, hey, you know, for um, if it were a random trivia question, you would have nailed it by guessing. So That's exactly right. And don't you forget it. <laughs> Many mirrors made in pre-colonial Mesoamerica are... Uh, even by today's standards called incredibly intricate art and marvels of painstaking craftsmanship. Wow. Um, there were mirrors even uh, in ancient Greece that after obsidian, they were made in Greece from very thin layers of incredibly polished metal, usually copper. Um, mm. And you just polish, 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 and then keep putting thin layers on top of each other until it's essentially a, a full reflection. In ancient wow. China... It was uh, the same concept, but instead of copper, they used bronze. So, wow! I like okay. to think if I, I were that. on um, Antique Roadshow, mm -hmm. if I saw now like a really ref reflective bronze, I would be like, obviously ancient China. Like I would look like such obviously a, such a smart. This is I'd be like, is this? I'd be like, that's ancient China, and they're like, that's not bronze, dumbass. I'd be I'd like, be like oh. maybe if it were bronze, idiot, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> idiot. <laughs> who brings up? Who brings uh, up? <laughs> obsidian mirror to antiques roadshow, idiot. I feel like I'd be like, this is literally like eight thousand years old. It's crazy fragile. Um, I feel like this is the least sensible, sensical episode we've ever done. Like, I don't even know what we're are talking you sure? about anymore. But I, I just keep speaking. <laughs> I'm like, what am I? I don't even know what I'm saying ever at all. Anyway, Christine, I missed you so much. Look, <laughs> I feel like I don't know how to speak to people anymore after the holiday. No, 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 mm -mm. no. Um, people have said that they like the sh the episodes where it sounds like we're on a phone call. This is it. If you want to know oh, what a phone call is what sounds like, <laughs> it's yeah, not this good. Is what it's, it's like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> A five minute conversation, don't know her. It's always been at least Never three heard. hours long. Okay. Sure. Here we go. So mm. there's just reflective, polished reflective metals was the main thing at the time. Centuries later, mirrors start okay. being made of glass. And I don't know enough about this. Again, this is 101, not like 401. But I wonder why they didn't think of glass before. Like, did anyone even suggest it? And then at the meeting, they were like, that's fucking crazy. Let's it's stick with what stupid. we know. You know? Um, I just feel like there was not that accessibility to glass. Like, you had access to, like, if you lived by volcanic rock or volcanic formations, you could probably access obsidian. But I feel like glass, don't you need to, like, make make it out of sand and all this? I don't know. Is I wonder, this, again, about to show my true nature, which is stupid but like at an ocean like like sea glass is that not sea glass is when um when put, like, like bottles and stuff break in and then they get and then they become uh, sea glass they kind of turn into little they look like little stones but it's like from i'm pretty sure it's like from an actual like a bottle of heineken or something oh I so think. it's like man-made glass become 
I, I thought so. Should we Google it? Let's learn together. Hang on. No, let's just pretend we know it. What is sea glass? I've already typed in the question. I'm sea on Wikipedia glass for sea glass. Are naturally weathered pieces of glass with which often have the appearance of tumbled stone. Sea glass is physically and chemically weathered glass. Oh, okay, you're right. It's chemically weathered glass so it's found on glass, beaches. glass, like, from actual man-made glass that gets turned into kind of... It, like, tumbles, like a rock tumbler, and becomes, Man, like, I pretty little rocks. tricked this whole time. I just thought, I was but like, I what part there of was the ocean is making about... pretty sea glass like this? But I thought sand is how you make glass. Am I wrong? Well, that would make that? sense because you put, you put, like, a dirt-sand mixture in, like, right, rock tumblers right. to right, polish right, them. Right, right, right. Oh, yes, you do. Okay, silica sand, heating quartz sand or silica sand. Yeah, so I feel like it wasn't something you could necessarily, like, really make unless you had the right all, techniques all and of a sudden I, have, I mean, All of a sudden, I have no idea how glass is made, and I'm, like, actually... Well, you like, need I to... Ter- well, we all know you need to heat it to temperatures above 3,090 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and okay. I guess if you have a volcano, that's pretty damn hot, right? So... It sure is. <laughs> Sure How is. hot is a volcano? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, while you do that, I'm going to look up what the hottest volcano ever was. <laughs> hottest <laughs> volcano ever. <laughs> oh my god, it's not hot enough. You can't make glass out of a volcano because it only goes up to 12, oh, 2,190 degrees. And as we all know, glass needs to be made at, at least 3,090 degrees. Okay. Wait. How hot is blue lava? There's blue lava. I think that's actual a Mountain Dew flavor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actual lava is red orange. <laughs> Truly blue <laughs> lava. I guess is that because like when like fire gets too hot, it becomes like a little blue on top. Is that what we're Whoa. talking about? Oh. I'm guessing because that's not on our Wikipedia, so it's not helping me. But truly blue lava would require temperatures of at least. Almost eleven thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, whoa. Which is how hot whoa. it feels in my apartment when Allison turns the temperature to seventy four. By the way, and um, that's why you have from... to buy eighty blankets in the middle of the night. Yeah, you said it on me, Allison. Are you listening? <laughs> uh, which is much higher than any lava can naturally achieve on the surface of the earth. Okay, so blue lava can't exist. I felt I didn't even know that, and I knew that at the same time. <laughs> You're like, that's kind of what I thought at the beginning, but we went on a weird journey to get back to what I already thought. I, um, like, I knew I had never heard of blue lava because it didn't exist. And now I've been. No, told it, it does exist. exist. It does exist in Indonesia uh, on the island of Java. Sulfur. Okay. <laughs> Can, is there you a know? lava specialist who listens to this show? Can you fucking tell us what's Even going on Even if you're a here? magma specialist, we'll accept that as well. <laughs> Um, if you dabble in the earth's crust that'd be great Um, (laughs) okay do you um, let's see if there was if you could make lava any color obviously it would be on one two three purple green what oh (laughs) I forgot we were talking about Um, (laughs) but then red and blue you could make purple because red and blue (gasps) <gasps> that's so true okay maybe green then because mm. it's extra special because it's like it looks like ectoplasm i think never been done before right right right, right, right. never been done or Take pink because she's one of the girls pink would be cute i like pink Barbie okay theme volcano you know lava would be a great baby name so would magma oh but you got to be careful because magma is like so probably going to become a douche Mm. there's no nerd named magma there's no one named magma (laughs) obviously we know you can't be a nerd named magma so that's off the table (laughs) but like you know like lava she'd go through a phase where she's like call me love like la la yeah and it's like just because your name doesn't have a nickname you can't just make one up sorry um Lava <clears throat> is such a like a, a, a I feel like that's like a San Diego like a beach surfer name. Lava, my name. Like she ha- for sure has vocal fry. There's no way. Oh, def defo. She doesn't yeah. go. My name's Lava. She's lava. She couldn't. Like you could literally. <laughs> Even couldn't. if she could, she would figure out how to not. We'd know. <sighs> In case anyone's wondering, because I also had to think it. Like I did take my medication today, so I don't know what's happening, but I do feel like. <laughs> I, I did, did too. 
I actually <laughs> took it like right on time also. So I don't know. Oh, I don't gosh. know what's happening, but I'm loving the situation happening chemically inside of my head. I think maybe okay. I, am, I am too. <clears throat> Here's a fact that you've already said. Um, centuries later, mirrors were made of glass. That's how we got here, by the way. Um, oh, right. And because of this, oh, I should have finished my own fucking sentence. Mirrors were expensive symbols of the wealthy elite because glass was so hard to access. I literally, okay. I mean, yes. Right. That's yeah, kind of, yes. yes, that's what we all landed upon um, and then talked around for 25 minutes. But yes, okay, great. So you By couldn't way, just make glass. There is no blue lava, let's be clear. Um, okay, well, you know what, magma experts, weigh in, okay? Because I feel like I'm right and Em's wrong. I feel like, okay, anyway, blah, 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 blah. So um, mirrors eventually become even more commonplace uh, only after trade routes open up that I'll have mm -hmm. mirror markets, which to me is a mirror maze that I can't imagine <gasps> anything else. Carnival. Yeah. Mirror market. That's kind of cool, though. That's fun. Like if you don't have access to mirrors and you go through a mirror market and you're like, holy shit, I see me everywhere. Like that would be really trippy. Everywhere. It would mm. be like like when um, like Jack Jack and the Incredibles all of a sudden is there's like 10 of him. But it's the first time you've oh. ever seen that. It's like the Spider-Man meme when they're, everyone's pointing at each other. Oh. Oh, you, you, you. Yeah. Imagine if you went on a first date with someone to the mirror market and now they don't know <gasps> which one's you. That would be so And they so just run awkward. into walls. They just run into mirrors because they're trying to find you. They just run into obsidian over and over again. Oh. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Classic first date so mishap. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh trade routes open up so mirror markets are become a thing and on top of that um mirrors become more uh like a want because the the wealthy have them so all of a sudden sure. there's this demand for them but the modern mirror itself the one that we know was not popular until the 13th century in venice italy that's the beginning oh, of it oh okay Bum, bum, bum. The process was created by layering clear, non-colored, flat sheets of glass mm -hmm. over a combination of metals like mercury and gold. Which, oh my God, gold is in a mirror? Not yeah, maybe like, not you anymore. You know you have the glass, and then it kind of looks like all spotty. I feel like that they would put like metals behind the glass to make it like reflect back at you, oh. and it looks all kind of weathered and like I don't know. You, I just yeah, thought of, like, of all the things that go into a mirror, gold was not on my list. Mercury also was not on my fucking list. That, like, can't be good I know for about you. the mercury. Yeah, no, certainly not. Is it? It's not still in mirrors. No, no, it no. It can't be. I don't think so. It can't be. I mean, and okay. not, not in an unsafe level, at least. I was going to say, so what if, like, a mirror shattered? Like, now you have mercury poisoning? Like, what happens? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm obviously not a scientist. All I know is well, yeah, I've been told not to ever... I like just know I'm not supposed to touch mercury. I feel like it'd be weird to bring it home. And then what if everything shattered and now there's mercury all over the floor? And what I mean, if I was that's barefoot? literally what's in a thermometer. So don't break it and eat it, you know? <sighs> that's a good point. Um, mm. Okay. Thank These you. Venetian glass mirrors, because they were the first of their kind and they were made out of things like mercury and gold... These Venetian glass mirrors cost a fortune and were incredibly mm. popular among the upper class. And I like to imagine that um, there is a mirror somewhere that sat in a room with a celery vase and they both just oh, symbolized wealth. You got to believe it. You got. Well, I do. Also, I found a <laughs> celery vase at my aunt's house and she didn't even know what it was. Did you know that? <gasps> no. Oh, my God. That's kind of fun to be like the bearer of such great news. I literally felt like, I mean, I'm as I'm here, confused about everything I've said so far, I was, um, I felt like such a history buff because I was cleaning out part of her kitchen and I was like, oh my gosh, look at this face. And I was like, did you know that this is a celery vase? And she was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And then I got to do the whole history of the, the celery. That's blah, blah, blah. so special. Did you put it in the closet with the mirror so you could actually say that a mirror and a celery vase were in the same room? Because mm. that, you could have really like your, your own prediction could have come true that's actually i should have could have would have unfortunately mm, next time but um anyway so just like the celery vase uh mirrors are seen as upper class and they became so popular and so um again they were still really hard to make and they only came from venice so uh they were incredibly hard to get 
because of that they were very expensive and i guess there was some sort of kerfuffle that you know I, if i knew better how to do like newspaper research mm-hmm. i would have looked into it but people were so desperate for mirrors that they had to write laws about who could and couldn't own mirrors surprise what? it was the poor people the poor people yeah, wow <laughs> um but they also had to write laws for mirror i i'm just calling them mirror artisans because i don't know what the right word would be mirrorists mm. um if you were a venetian mirror maker mm-hmm. they wrote laws that you could never leave venice ever because <gasps> they were afraid that you would share the Take secrets on how to make a mirror elsewhere Oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. that's horrifying. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden it'd be like, well, then I quit. And now they're even harder to make because there's less people making them. Yeah, you probably aren't allowed to quit. (laughs) Yeah, at that point, like, are you just, did you get trapped into a career forever? Probably. Um, So as usual, limiting mirrors that way made the wealthy elite only want them more and made other people also want them more, but they didn't even have access to it. So go capitalism. Yeah, in standard the 19th century um where we are time traveling now in the Mm -hmm. 19th century a method to quickly make mirrors finally came out of germany so does that mean that from the 13th century to the 19th century venice was like the standard for a mirror the hot spot probably imagine if like right at the beginning of the 19th century you finally get a venetian mirror and then this new method comes out and it's like the germans are like i ruined it (laughs) (laughs) so there's this method uh comes out of germany and it's essentially coating glass with a thin layer of silver which i guess was more Mm. accessible and it was cheaper and the glass maybe i think was thicker and so the whole process was just more efficient it was easier to make um it really wasn't that big of a secret and i like how the germans were kind of like what like it's hard like we just let everyone yeah, have that's this pretty pretty classic they're like engineering what like it's hard and i'm yeah. like yes it's <laughs> like, very hard and i don't know how to do math but thanks why have we let in. why have we let italy have this monopoly for 600 years on something that's so easy to make just swoop um, on in so they now have mirrors which are much more like the standard mirror and they became household staples especially through europe first and the clear glass technique spread globally so uh since then we've had mirrors and since then people have uh been coming up with beliefs about their power Mm. and i mean think about never having seen a mirror i guess you've seen your reflection maybe in like water or something well i think to so clearly see yourself a lot yeah, I think about that a lot, a lot, a lot. I don't know why, but it has always kind of bothered me. Like, what if you went back in time and you just never had, a, like, you just wouldn't, like, yeah, looking in water or, or like, a still pond or a bowl of water. I don't know. You, like, that's the only way. It feels like the best you had was, like, uh, yeah, still pond. Because other than that, if there were no mirrors or cameras, your best bet was being able to afford maybe an oil painting once or twice in your life is someone painting a picture of you and like right. you have to hope that they're good enough that you can yeah trust and if they, what if you they look fuck like. up they're they're just gonna be like no that is where your ear is you just don't know because you can't <laughs> it's see. like no you do have you a constant boogie on, under your little nose yeah, yeah. <laughs> that smudge is not a mistake when i sneezed it's actually part of your face you just can't I mean, see I'm, it I- Truly imagine, though, like paying for an oil painting when you're like 30 and finding out that you have. That you're hot as hell. <laughs> but imagine finding out you're like a total uggo, you know? Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, then honestly, probably for the best that you didn't know so that you lived with the confidence, you know? There had like... to be like, you know how like, you know, time always is constantly evolving or a language is constantly evolving with time. There had to be like some you know subtle phrase back then to be like i hope they don't get a painting of themselves you know like something of like <gasps> oh yeah they they're not find paint, out. paint worthy yeah 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 i like or like that. your friend um, takes you out to dinner and they're like i'm gonna get a, a portrait of myself and everyone goes Ooh, um we knew this hmm. day would come <laughs> who's who's gonna tell her <laughs> But yeah like i mean i can't even imagine 
because we've seen our own reflection before we even understand the concept of mirror. I mean, we're so small. I mean, it's no... part of like it's part of infant learning, like to look in a mirror yeah. and learn and understand. Like that's part of learning nowadays. It's crazy to think there was a time when like most people never looked in a mirror, never. And so for there to all of a sudden be a creation that is easy to purchase, easy to create. It can be done anywhere, and it's like relatively cheap compared to the last several yeah. centuries. I mean, this is the moment that people are the game changer. I have to imagine if TikTok was a thing back then, there'd be a trend <laughs> where people were seeing themselves for the fucking first time. Like, even though they had be... TikTok, so they could really just film themselves, but they didn't think of that. I know. So I know. Wait for I, <laughs> if, I if there was a way to spread trends, I feel like that would be like right. Here's a, a moment, or like, yeah. If anyone has ever found like a postcard or a letter from them being like, we saw ourselves for the first time, that would blow my damn mind. That'd be so <gasps> cool. Don't um, send it to M because M throws old things in the trash. Throw it, send it to no, me and I'll thing, keep it forever. <laughs> that I would keep. Like to see that like someone is discovering something that's so normalized today. That's so cool. I'm glad that you so, think this because I think about this all the time with the mirrors. Like I've spent a lot of my life thinking about like wh what would it have been like to never look in a mirror? Which it makes yeah. me sound vain. I don't mean it in a vain way. I just mean like as like a self identity no. way. Um, so I'm glad that I totally... you also had the thought. Yeah, and also, well, okay. I know we're spiraling. I'm so sorry. Imagine like a like a what the beauty standard must have been then. Like you couldn't even really fix yourself if you didn't know what you looked like. You know, like if you were yeah, they didn't have like pressured. Walgreens swart remover. You know, it's like well, shit. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, so ever you since fix Mears yourself. <laughs> You know what I mean. No one has to fuck themselves. Blah, 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 blah. Fix, yeah, I'm going to quote that on Reddit. Did anyone else hear it? Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to get canceled mm -hmm. over it. But um, <laughs> but yeah, if people are saying like, oh, you have to have this type of cheekbone and you're like, well, what the fuck do I have? I don't know. Like, I don't know. You got to tell me. Um, yeah. Anyway, so people started having, you know, all sorts of thoughts on mirrors. And if they, I mean, it was such a powerful invention that. Mm -hmm. There was power behind it already. It probably different felt cultures magical had... almost. Yes. I know this is like a stupid comparison, but I've said it before. The first time I ever tried VR, I like cried. I yeah. like couldn't understand. I like my brain, no human brain was ever meant to It feels like you've like that. elevated to like a next level of humanity almost. You're like, what? Yeah. The possibilities are endless. I imagine. And even um, I've said this too, when I did Ancestry and I figured out like what one of my relatives names was mm. and all I ever wanted to know was anything about him i figured out his name i started crying i imagine the first yeah. time you fucking see yourself and not and yeah, like, it's like an identity oh, thing not even a weird morphed like 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 you're blurry. not seeing yourself off of some weird polished copper like you're seeing your whole ass body for the first time or yeah, like i think like even you know what it must next to your think family about, like, you can all see your family Okay, I was about to say, think about like looking at yourself and saying, holy shit, I look like my dad who passed or like, oh my God, I have Aww. my mom's eyes, you know, like I feel like things like that that you wouldn't even necessarily know how to recognize. Yeah. Or to have a mirror in a room where like that was like in a common room and you and all of your kids could like stand next to each other just and you stand could look there. at your, just stand. No just wonder like, they're just... haunted. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you got a mirror from like 1850 and put it in your house and like you you see a family in it it's probably because they just stood there and stared at themselves all day and it's an imprint i don't know i feel like no wonder they're fucking haunted it also makes me like not very surprised that so many artists have like portraits of themselves that they did by looking in a mirror it's fair, like well, yeah fair point it's like i want to remember this when i don't have a mirror nearby like you know or like yeah. i can i trust myself as an artist to do the best representation of what i look like so let me do it before someone else does it I want people to so, know how hot I am and where my ear goes. People and I'm also Van Gogh. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. Um, so many cultures had a bunch of different beliefs uh, come out of the invention of mirrors. And you talked already about um, some older places. So we'll start there. In many Mesoamerican cultures, uh, mirrors especially had powers in religious ceremonies and practices. Mm. And I don't know if that kind of started the trickle down effect of like oh these are portals to another space but i think maybe it just blew their minds in general that they were they were like this has to be a creation from not right. man like something yeah it feels like elevated yeah yeah and so uh they thought that there was a lot of power in them in ceremonies and in a lot of ancient mayan 
um, or my ritual and burial sites, there are mirrors that are often recovered in um, mm. like archaeological finds. There's always mirrors cool. because they were involved so much. Some Mesoamerican cultures actually also thought that mirrors connected you to the other worlds. So they started using mirrors when it came to scrying and divination, mm. although it was used more for viewing than like future casting. It wasn't um, like a mirror. I feel like that's tricky. So I just wanted to say it that like, I guess a mirror and a crystal ball are different things or are thought of as different things. A lot of times I feel like like in, broad broad strokes a lot of people think oh a crystal balls you can see the future which if you listen to our rituals episode on (laughs) crystal balls you find out very quickly that it's just kind of actually a a mind trick to get yourself not really in a trance but it's really a form of meditation and lets you think clearly and it almost is um, a trance i mean some sort of a trance but yeah like a like a meditative state yeah yeah it's almost like like listening to sleep sounds or something is how i equate it it's like it's just kind of helping your mind empty and focus on one thing and right but glass in general and mirrors in general were used for um, for viewing or I guess something on the same level versus, mm, okay. oh, I'm, I'm going to, I can have premonitions now. Right. Okay. Mirrors were therefore associated with powerful figures. A lot of shamans were associated with mirrors. And then there was an Aztec deity named uh, Tezcatlipoca, or, which means... Uh, smoking mirror and it was often depicted he was often depicted holding um an obsidian mirror so cool i love when they've got a deity who has like a little accessory like if you were gonna make if you were gonna make a barbie doll of this deity boom yeah where's his mirror so um actually i don't even know if it's a a guy (laughs) i don't even know if it's a guy um tezcatlipoca tezcatlipoca but anyway, um, uh, it's nice to know that if they made an action figure out of you, you'd be holding an old dirty lemon and maybe your social security <laughs> card after you found it on the floor. No, you'd be um, holding it. You'd be behind me like, wait, you dropped this. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be holding what all a, my belongings. <laughs> what a fuck you that my accessory would be your things. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's the best part. And I'm just like free, free well, wheeling around. You'd actually have no yeah. accessories because you drop everything. Yeah, I drop. Right. I wouldn't be able to keep on keep a. Hand your hands would just now. be free. Uh, just sorry, and you'd have a confused look. Like, where is it? You know, <laughs> I'd be like, I did, but I don't really care because someone will yeah. find it for me. <laughs> yeah, oh, actually, you're doing this. You're going ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> In these belief systems, it's um, but the ones that I've already talked about. It's mainly the mirrors themselves that are portals and doors, but the like paranormal element or the like creepy element it's not focused on the reflection in the mirror it's that the mirror itself is a standalone powerful entity but there are but there are other beliefs that focus more on the reflection um a lot of mirror symbolism in history has for very obvious reasons uh been associated with vanity even in Mm -hmm. latin the word mirror is uh mirari which means to admire. And, oh, sure. Okay. And mirrors are also associated um, in ancient Greece with the cautionary tale of Narcissus. Narcissus. Um, do you know this story? Yes, where he stared at himself in a pond mm-hmm. and was so yeah, enamored so with himself. Yeah, so he's a man who was so... He was, yeah. he was so beautiful that he was beloved by all, and one day <laughs> he saw his own reflection in the water and fell in love with himself... And ended up dying longing for himself, but could mm-hmm. never have him. Um, and then, so there's, that's, again, its own cautionary tale about vanity. Don't let yourself get obsessed with your looks. Right. Um, in some Christian narratives, there's also an inherent danger in your reflection because by seeing or appreciating your own reflection, uh, mm. they are considered graven images or a carved idol used as right, an like object you're idolizing worship. yourself over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially like so there's Amish communities and and uh, again broad strokes here but in Amish communities it's generally believed that l- the likeness of yourself to show right. it at all is a sin and so to avoid vanity that's why a lot of Amish people avoid being photographed and even their own like baby dolls don't have faces on them which cannot <laughs> be an eerier sight when you first see it um, yeah, but the reason yeah. the reason for it I've I I have seen Amish dolls and I did not know the reason just yet. And I was like, that 
doesn't Uh-oh. look finished. <laughs> I was like, that's the <laughs> creepiest thing I've ever seen. It's like, but who now, erased their face? You know. But yes, but it is, uh, yeah. It's it's intentional because their uh, belief system is to avoid reflecting human likeness because they don't want you obsessing over looks or, you know, anything like that because right. it's distracting you from a bigger picture. Today, most Amish people seem to believe that the mirrors don't actually capture, you know, your reflection isn't a graven image, but they do still a lot of times avoid being photographed. Yeah. Um, and I just want to put it out there because I always thought this as well. And it was just pure ignorance. The steal the is, soul thing. <laughs> yes. I had no, yeah, we, I didn't know. Yeah, I just heard it. And always, I just kind of moved on with life. Growing up in Ohio, we would visit Amish country a lot. And that was definitely one of those ignorant stupid rumors we would always spread like i you know always thought it was real you can't take a photo because i think that your soul's there's yeah that's it's yeah it's kind of yes up. so let me let me state it for everybody else it is an urban legend that uh amish people believe that getting a photo of themselves or looking into a mirror will trap their soul inside of the picture or the mirror and it will prevent them from going to heaven um yeah. not true i thought it was true but that was also because i didn't have an amish person to like ignorantly yeah. ask a question about yeah um but the the reality is it, it they don't think their soul is going to be trapped in there they're just trying to avoid vanity for their religious beliefs right um so that being said i have heard tour guides say some pretty um ignorant yeah. things i don't know if that's to like bolt like boost up the tour or something but it gets spread very easily so if you hear it just it's not true like grain of um, salt or grain of sand mm-hmm. grain of quartz sand oh oh Oh, oh, grain of sand, shard of sea glass. I you mean, tell what me. else? What do you say? <laughs> you tell I me. Don't know. What do you say? <laughs> I don't know. All of this is improv. Either. I have no what, idea. None of this is anything. <laughs> Every conversation we've ever had was improv, for sure. Because yeah, unless it's sure, written sure, down sure. on this fucking Microsoft not good Word improv. document, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay, so... Yes, not a real Amish belief, but they do believe that any likeness could be dangerous. Um, so, okay, uh, there are European traditions out there called poppets. I guess puppet, oh. puppet, puppet, puppet. Um, they're essentially powerful dolls that represent a person in rituals. So, oh, cool. In this sense, a doll is a reflection of you. So, uh, because it's a reflection of you, whatever harm happens to it can be done to you. It's what oh, no. has become stereotypically known as a voodoo doll. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, which apparently this was falsely attributed with voodoo. I did not know that. But during the American occupation of Haiti, a lot of um, Haitian practices were vilified. But, mm. you know, this also this existed in other cultures. So, so right. I, okay. You know. Many people think that once a person dies, this is also something I, I heard growing up, um, not in my own home, but enough that it didn't seem weird to me. It felt like it was like kind of normalized is uh, once a person dies, mirrors in the house should be covered or the wandering soul could get trapped inside. I do know. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I feel like this is a stereotype that I I don't fully believe, but I do weirdly respect uh, like I'm, uh, you know, blah, 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 I respect all beliefs. But I, I just want to put that out there. But this is one that like it doesn't s- sound as odd to me. This one, yeah. Feels well, I, more I, at home. I feel like we've seen that. Like when we went to, I mean, Winchester. Correct me if I'm wrong. Winchester, where she was in mourning and would cover the mirrors. Like I feel mm-hmm. like that was something we've seen, like it, historically. Yeah, it, it's I. Yeah, and it's so also I wonder hard it's... to like criticize someone's like grief tactic, you know. So that's it's like, gotta be it. You know, it's like, well, if that's what you believe or feel, it's if your hard version to say, of like, well... if your version of grieving is putting a blanket on a mirror, like, girl, do whatever you gotta do. Like, yeah, yeah. for real. <laughs> um, also, I feel like maybe it feels more normalized in my head because. I did always grow up hearing like, oh, you know, mirrors are portals to the other side. So with that in mind, it's like, oh, well, if the soul goes to the portal on the other side, they might you get can like, like make that connection. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's like some irrational totally. rationale, you know? Yeah. Um, in more there's intense like a logic forms, there. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You got to take a couple leaps, but not as many as others. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. 
you tell in me. In more intense forms of this belief of, you know, mirrors having to be covered, there are other groups, people who think that all reflective surfaces must be covered when someone dies, all the way down to glasses of water. Oh, wow. Okay. Because even that could trap the spirit, which that that goes a little further than what I would comfortably kind of believe on my own. But the thought alone is still like a if it's a what if and it's real, like how scary. Like, can you imagine your whole fucking life? You have this big, great life and then you get trapped in a fucking Dasani bottle. I'd be like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, I hate Dasani. Oh, it would be terrible. I'd be so bummed out. At least make it, you know, at least Evian. make a pull in spring or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, again, not to like fucking joke about people's beliefs, but like you're right. That, know, is a, that is a belief. Like that's very scary. That's very scary. Very scary. Or like, I mean, it's one of those things where you. I, at least, because I didn't grow up with that kind of, um, you know, understanding of things. But um, it makes you really wonder, like, what is reflective that's around you right now and you're not paying attention to? And it's like, oh, I have to cover up my Captain America shield? Are you kidding me? Like, oh, no. That'd be the one thing I'd want to see if I was dead. I'd be like, one I last know. time. One last time. Yeah. Put me in there. It, and also it makes you wonder, like, what's the, on a spectrum of reflection, like, at what point, like, if it's Good shiny point. at all, it's covered? Is that what it right. is? Or, like... like does your like watch count you know like your watch right. is it yeah. sh shiny the window like my tv when it's turned off does that mean <gasps> i have to watch tv all day just to get through it oh gosh okay fine i guess yeah it's hard life um so anyway I, w I would like to sit with more of an expert on that and be like what what's the situation so um many people believe that when a person dies you cover everything up um depending on the culture this can also be seen as not just protecting the soul, but like you said, just being respectful and creating a non-distracting environment for people in right. mourning. So um, good on you for realizing that. <laughs> Thank you so I, much. <laughs> there's a Chinese funeral tradition where anyone who sees the reflection of the casket will suffer even more grief and could even bring on another death, which oh, that no. terrifies me. Oh, but no, I guess no, 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 no. My thought is like, because we're already all focusing on one spirit that any reflection is a portal for others to come through or, you know sure. like that. you're like just um, extenuating the the death so i wonder if that means like do caskets in china or in in these areas at least i wonder are they like sanded down so there's no gloss on them just in case like i i, I don't know it'd be a cultural difference oh but wait maybe, interesting. i think they mean i think they mean like to see the casket in a reflection of something else right oh maybe like to see the casket reflected in like, the reflection a of the casket you're right i thought it was like if they see oh god the casket like is themselves. shiny i was like then don't you just not make it shiny yeah <laughs> easy solution <laughs> i was like i can fix that one okay <laughs> good job <laughs> um some lore says that your soul travels while you sleep which we've talked about this a lot mm -hmm. so it's also best to avoid sleeping with a mirror facing your bed or to even have a glass of water beside you because the glass could be a reflection which i always Stanley? thought of it yeah well that just not the the silver part maybe cover that up um oh okay i feel like uh with a mirror facing your bed i always took it an even darker route of like oh it's an open portal and like demons are going to come out at night and maybe that's like yeah a, that's the I've way i always, always went where it's more dangerous than your soul i've always going. had a, a a big draw to feng shui and i've found it very fascinating ever since i was little and i feel like i for some reason have a very like natural inclination to understand mm -hmm. it um and i follow a few tiktokers who do like uh, uh traditional feng shui and like explain it and i just find it so fascinating um and for some reason like the mirror thing i just from day one i was like yeah no you can't put a mirror i don't really know why it just in my head i'm mm. like that doesn't you can't put a mirror by your bed it's just bad energy i don't know i don't know if it's because the portal thing if it's a reflection if it which just is weird because weird. i I, I have a mirror facing my bed and i've never gotten any weird vibes from it i, I wonder if it's because it's so far away or I don't I mean I, I don't think know. it's probably just more like if it if it's something that like bothers you you know I mean I think if you don't feel but anything I also, weird about it then I also wonder though if there's a science to it like is it just like an uncanny valley thing of seeing yourself at night in the dark and like Ooh, like could the could you moving and from the corner of your eye it feels like a shadow walk by like I wonder if like you're setting yourself up to for it. like fear yeah, a jump scare yeah 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 um, maybe 
even if your soul doesn't wander, which is, we kind of just touched on this, but even if your soul doesn't wander away and that be the reason you keep a mirror away from your bed, but spirits who watch you through the open portal, oh, they no. can reach out and find you. So that's mainly oh, no. the fear oh, that uh, I have. And they know when you're sleeping. That's not good. And they know okay. when you're awake. They, they know, know if you've been bad or good. Been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. <laughs> Or they'll get you. Um, all sorts of villains. Villains? Did I write that? All sorts of villains. Was... I did write villains. All sorts Every of villains. Every villain is lemons. <laughs> 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 is that what you wrote? Because um, you could probably see Nickelodeon. What I, <laughs> I think what I meant was demons, and I was just tired writing the notes. Villains! villains. <laughs> <laughs> villains all sorts of demons or dark spirits or whatever are supposed to live in mirrors i guess villains do if if you're writing like the next incredibles movie by the way this is your moment to make a mirror monster go Um, for it since all villains apparently live in mirrors um and again because it's a portal between two worlds just as our soul can go to them at night they can come to us at night so in Ireland, this is one superstition, that if you look in a mirror at night, you can see a fairy, which is apparently very bad luck. You can also see oh. demons, or you could have bad visions of your oh. own health. Yikes. Oh, no. Um, eventually, I imagine stories like this over time of don't look in a mirror because of our personal belief. Oh, don't look in a mirror because of our personal belief. All of them kind right. of you know, circled through the world, and we get creepy, scary games like Bloody Mary. Yeah, um, which uh, we covered in episode 90 and it involves going into a bathroom in the dark, facing the mirror and chanting Mary's name. Sometimes, apparently, based on where you live, you have to chant Mary's name 47 times. What? Can you imagine accidentally doing it 48 times and now you have to start all over? <laughs> Bullshit. Can you imagine saying Bloody Mary 46 times and then accidentally saying Muddy Blary and being like, <laughs> shit, <laughs> now I have to start over <laughs> You know if you're doing it with like your little sister or something and she fucks up you god damn it like just like oh you ruin everything <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that I remember recording the Bloody Mary episode because I was so Do freaked you? out I remember where I was sitting it was my old house in Los Angeles and uh-huh. we were both sitting there and I was I kept looking over my shoulder Talk about feng shui. The chair was like my back was facing the door, and I just kept looking behind me. It scared me that episode. Well, if you'd like to go be scared and listen to apparently what could become our two parter, go back in time and listen to the Bloody Mary episode. <laughs> um, these are some of the things. If you count, I guess between three to forty-seven times, if you say her name that many, these are the things that could happen based on where you live and what the cultural differences are. Some right. say that playing Bloody Mary leads to Mary's head appearing in the mirror with blood running down her face. Some people say her body appears with a bloody neck and no head at all. Oh. Sometimes uh, drops of blood fall out of the mirror. Oh my God. Oh. Sometimes Mary manifests physically and comes out of the mirror with yeah. a knife to drag you back into the mirror with her forever. <laughs> and me at 13 is like, <laughs> cool let's do it <laughs> and every single person was like sign me up all children decided this is a good idea like what Spe- the fuck speaking of which because they talked about her bloody neck i gotta ask because i just asked um allison earlier i was like where does your neck end and where does your throat begin and at w- and how big is the threck you know i always like- thought your <laughs> threck i always thought your throat was like in your neck like i thought this whole thing was your neck and like your throat no. is just the part where you swallow and I don't know. I mean, that's just in my own. Oh, maybe. Mind, I always thought but... your throat externally and internally was the part to the front and then the sides and back are the neck. No? Oh, so you think it was just like the back of her neck? <laughs> yeah. And she kept her throat? <laughs> <laughs> like her tongue still flopping around. Oh, there, yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, what was that the makes belief, sense. What was the belief that you had, like, when you played Bloody Mary as a kid? Like, what was the story? Which, again, we probably talked about in episode 90, but yeah. I don't remember. It was much more tame than any of those descriptions. It was just that, like, you would see someone standing behind you. I Yeah, I thought it was, like, her, she, her, mine was always her head would appear in the mirror. Like, her face would appear in the mirror. Her head only? Like, was it floating? Or did she have her no, threck? So- <laughs> wow. You know, considering I didn't ask. learn the word threck until... <laughs> 
two seconds ago. Um, I don't think that was part of the game. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I feel like the, the story I was told was like she would just appear in the mirror. I don't think there was even like a more of a description than that. You know, what's wild is like for Bloody Mary, it's like no one tells you what happens after she's appeared. It's like, do you just stand there and stare at each other and have a yeah, fucking that, staring contest? Does I she walk away? Somebody, I think somebody just always screams. Yeah, and then and everyone, then everyone runs. screams, and then yeah. mom yells downstairs like, "Go to bed!" And then yeah, you're all in trouble. Well, like, what if you saw her? Like, what? At some point, maybe no one's lived to tell the tale. Oh no, that's a good way to end it. Okay. Um, some say that uh, this is another um, mirror stereotype that we have discussed over and over. But some say hanging a mirror on a door also creates a portal for demons to enter your house. Oh, no. So like if you put it on your front door, then you've technically erased the door. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> <that's> bad news. <laughs> but other people say that if you hang a mirror above a door, it keeps demons and bad oh. spirits out. Sure. It's like reflecting them away. Sure. But I also, but like on the, if you're hanging then, a... Wouldn't it be the same? Wouldn't yeah. it be the same thing when you'd be erasing that chunk of wall? Yeah, you'd think so. I guess bricks are stronger. I don't know. I don't know. Some modern practitioners of witchcraft use mirrors to actually block negative energies, even though it is common lore and stereoty- stereotypical to say that mirrors are only bad and only bring energy towards you. So, okay, fair point. A lot of people use them to push them out. I wonder what you, what like, the, speaking of like kinky people, I don't know, since mm. you've got your weird little compartment, you can answer this maybe. <laughs> but for the people who like put mirrors on the ceiling because they mm-hmm. want to like watch stuff go down. Ooh la la. What is happening there with the spirits? Oh, like, they are saying, next, next portal, please. I don't think I need to be involved in this situation. Or they're saying, ooh, ooh, I let me yeah. in. Yeah, I don't know. Is putting mirrors on your ceiling kind of like the cinemax for ghosts it's like oh let's flip through the channels go to portal now portal in this that neighborhood. you're like at a hotel and you're like oh shit i didn't mean to scroll yeah. so far you know it's like hang on hang on hang on i didn't pay for this but uh yeah maybe I, uh, but, maybe but, I don't what, mind. but like what if i just scroll through one more time and just linger a little too it's long like, see what's but going now on. now that we're here maybe we just watch and if someone like walks in the room i'm gonna keep my finger on the last button just in case right just, we'll in case. just go just back to nickelodeon real quick um <laughs> <laughs> do you do you did you watch House of Usher? Is that porn? What are you talking about? <laughs> House of Usher? The fall Usher, of the House of Usher. Is it about Usher? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And all his many kinks? No. Um <laughs> I was it's like well, uh, <laughs> no. How did we get it's, here? It's uh it's uh it's that new Netflix uh drama or uh horror series about um Edgar Allan Poe. No, nope. I don't okay. even know what you're talking about. No. Oh, okay. You know, he did um he it's the same guy who did um uh Haunting of Hill House and Haunting of Bly Manor oh, and Midnight okay. Mass. Um didn't know. I yeah. swear to god I wasn't joking. I really thought there must be a connection to porn or Usher. Uh, or is both. it about Usher or both? <laughs> uh it's Mike Flanagan, sorry just to give cred. But uh it's really good, but there's a whole thing about a mirror, so I just Oh, all right. In fact, if you want to watch it, it's really good. It's all very about creepy. a mirror, which is interesting because Black Mirror was very rarely oh, about a mirror. A black one, too. Obsidian. Oh. <laughs> just saying. And just like that. I'm <laughs> um, okay. I promise I'm almost done. I know we've gone for quite some time now. I promise we're almost done. I'm loving it. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's another belief that... Okay, we already did that. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, some modern witches today say that they think spirits pass by and see their reflections and actually scare themselves and run away. So that's like, oh, so instead of mirrors bringing things toward you, even if they bring it toward you, then they see themselves and freak out and, and run. So it ends up blocking energy. Oh, um, I okay. guess that de- depends on which coven or belief system you're or like working how with. you're maybe using it as a tool, how you're using it. Yeah. Interesting. I do like the idea of like seeing yourself is so scary that you got to bounce, but it does kind of play off of <laughs> jump the <scare. laughs> jump scare. It does feel like it plays off of like certain, like once you're a ghost, you don't have a reflection. Once you're a vampire, you don't have a reflection. Mm, so maybe they true. see themselves and they go, holy shit. I thought I'm not supposed to be able to see this anymore. I haven't seen my wart in hundreds yeah. of years. <laughs> It's like all of yeah. a sudden I'm back in the 1800s and I can't or see myself Or what if again. you never looked in a mirror and now you're dead and you're like, that's what I looked like? 
you know. Oh my god. Oh yeah, if you were if you died before mirrors and mirrors, now you can right? see a reflection you're probably like you must Jesus, be like what, what is the that? fuck is going on? Yeah. Um huh, I feel like that could I could really spiral with that concept. I know, let's, I know. I'm sorry. I keep like leading quickly. us astray. I just I just we could quickly, really children. <sighs> quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. Um blah 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 blah. Oh, this leads to the belief that vampires and other creatures don't have reflections because they don't have souls. Apparently, witches also fall into this category for some people that, which I love that they're doing mirror work, but like couldn't possibly have their own fucking reflection. Also, I know witches and I promise I have taken pictures of them and they show up in the goddamn picture. Um, but <laughs> What witches? Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't see any. Uh, but there is newer folklore these days, which I love that folklore has to change and evolve with the Beautiful. story. It's so cool. New folklore theorizes that vampires actually would have reflections in modern oh. day mirrors because old mirrors were made we're of silver, silver <gasps> which is what vampires couldn't be near. Um, that just clicked for me. I never understood that. But now they'd be able to be seen in a mirror because mirrors aren't made with silver anymore. Whoa, that is tripping me out. Which also makes me think, would a werewolf survive a bullet if silver isn't what makes bullets anymore? You know what? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Grab the BB gun. No, um, <laughs> uh, no, but so it's just like, oh, well, with new inventions, you like almost have to come up with like, like what if like what what if the ingredient in garlic yeah you know what if that changed what if we're like now like see like, like leading you that know, out you know when they're like bananas like have are different than they were like forty years ago because they yeah. got yeah or there used to be purple carrots modified. and now they're orange it's like yeah. well what if not all mm. carrots you know like what if it's the orange carrots that you you're fine with but the purple carrots That's you right. want to okay with anyway so so many mysteries nowadays to vampires. Solve. <laughs> And nowadays, vampires would have uh, no reflection or would have reflections, I guess, unless they went to an antique store. Um, But another online theory has cropped up that uh, vampires were only uh, invisible in mirrors, not because they didn't have a soul and thus no reflection, but because silver actually cleanses reflections, which I don't know where that information comes from. But Hmm. that's one of the sources that I guess silver was. Oh, 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 no, I do have it. Sorry. I. I missed a bullet. Um, A silver bullet? (laughs) Wow. Good one, Christine. By the way, speaking of Awu, um, I... Speaking of Awu, yeah. I saw a baby at the airport yesterday, and I do this thing that everybody has probably heard at least once in their life, if you've heard my voice, where um, when I get really excited about things, I have this kind of like gay little chirp. I go, ah! Like, I just can't... Yeah, with the hand. I can't stop myself. For sure. I saw a baby... And it was like a toddler. It was like Leona's age. Uh And I waved to the baby. Baby, not interested. But then had a had a thought about it again and seemed interested all of a sudden. And then turns around a second time and waves to me with a big goofy smile. (gasps) And so I got so excited, I looked at Alice and I went, ah. And the baby did it back. No. And went (laughs) and went, ah. (laughs) Okay. Now that's delightful. I was like, that's precious. Okay. Now that would happen in a sitcom and I'd go, that would never happen. Like right. that's how cute yeah. that is. Yeah. I was like, I think I accidentally just like taught him how to be a girly, which I love. Yeah. But which like I was like good for him. Good for him. Um, okay, so Funkle uh, M blah, strikes blah, blah, blah. again. <laughs> and for my next trick, um, there's a theory that uh, vampires were only invisible in mirrors because silver actually cleansed their reflection because the reason silver was so popular at a different time was because it was a purifying agent or thought to be ah. a purifying agent to treat disease. Ah, okay. um, and so it was by being in a mirror, it was treating disease or spiritual ailments, spiritual disease by right. getting rid of vampires. Which is what um, a vampire has. Okay. So if that is technically true and with modern mirrors, they would be able to see themselves, then vampires have always had reflections. There was just things in their way. I see. In- interesting. In I love this. Yeah. Um, it's also said that when ghosts or demons walk by mirrors, the mirror might crack or tarnish because it is trying to hold in their spiritual power. Ooh. Um, which that terrifies me. But it would also make sense why in a lot of like scary stories, it's like, oh, and then all of a sudden this thing shattered or all of a sudden this thing, you know, imploded <gasps> on itself. 
Um, Interesting. Some, we've had people talk about glass just like breaking. There was one story on a listener's episode where like in college, like her whole mirror shattered or That's something. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah. Sometimes the image of the creature walking by in the mirror is said to even permanently stay reflected in the mirror, like a <laughs> broken screensaver, I guess. Oh, no. Um, which imagine if only like one time in her goddamn life could Bloody Mary do this, where she's like, oh, well, I'll just stay here forever then. And then you can walk <laughs> back and forth. She's still there. You've got the evidence, you know. Yeah, you got her. And her throat or th- with Threk. Her Threk, obviously. Yeah, um, obviously. And this one, I think, is, like, so smart. Mirrors used to be used by doctors and morticians to make sure they weren't accidentally burying patients alive because they would hold a mirror close up to the their breath. mouth to see if breathing would leave fog. Yeah, I've seen or that. condensation. On TV shows where they would hold the mirror up. I had no idea. Alive. Yeah. Didn't even occur to me. But I feel like that is, like, some of the smartest medical strategizing i've yeah, ever yeah, seen yeah 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 it's like <laughs> diy grassroots DIY. medicine yeah mirrors have also continued to be used as divination tools for centuries and i also thought i could just um end on a, a few more superstitions and i i i ended specifically on ireland just because we started with ireland sure. but one is that if two people look in the mirror at the same time, one might die soon, which, yikes. Oh, um, no. <laughs> what about that era where we all, like, before selfies and we all had to take mirror pictures? Oh, God. And then you'd see all the dirt all over your mirror. Or was that just yeah. me? <laughs> but, like, there's just, like, splotches on it and it reflects back on your digital camera. Oh, God. Another one is if you look in the mirror at midnight on Halloween, you will see in the reflection your future spouse. I personally think it'd be hysterical if you looked and now you're like is that my spouse or is that bloody mary like it could no. be both <laughs> she has a crush um, on me i feel like you'd look i feel like i'd look in and it would just be me and i'd be like yep sorry, sorry i'd be got. like it was those damn shoulders i knew it years ago um <laughs> i love myself a- i'm narcissus <laughs> oh i see what you're saying love. i thought you literally meant if it was you <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant, I meant it was just me and, uh, I got there. oh, you yeah. meant for you? <laughs> no, I meant I look in it and you it's were like, me alone. what if it was me? Wouldn't that be crazy if it was me? Be and I was like, this is gay. I love it. Unless. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just joking, but like, if only. But if like, let's go too. along for the ride. See where it takes us. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to look in the mirror. It's just going to be me. And they're going to be yes. like, see, you're alone forever. Ha ha. Good luck. I understand. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh okay so here's another one that i think is just so odd and it only because i didn't grow up with it but when i read it i was like i never expected this to be one full sentence um you have to peel an apple in one continuous peel without breaking the skin and then look in the mirror to see your reflection and the most intricate version of this is that you're facing the mirror you're peeling the apple don't break the skin then you throw the skin over your left shoulder, and when you look at it later, it yes. will have formed into the shape of the in, your initial. initials, the initial yeah. of who you're going to marry. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, which I think is super cool. Like, it sounds honestly it sounds like though, a fun game. It feels like a Halloween bobbing for apples kind of game. Yeah, uh, there's like something about game. these apples. Yeah, that are like part little we're, teenage party games. Were apples just like the most accessible thing it for must all these damn be. people? I mean, horses were eating them, so they couldn't have been that special. <laughs> like, well, I mean, not that horses extra. aren't special, but, you know. I... Right. Actually, I'm kind of so, craving sorry. apples, so that's my fun little treat after we record. Um, Ooh, good for you. Gonna be a little crazy today, huh? You gotta have an FLT, fun little treat, or else it's just not gonna go well today. Um, <laughs> Don't tell me. Also, uh, there's a related ritual that if you cut an apple into nine slices, eat the first eight, and then throw the ninth at the mirror... Your future husband will catch the slice. Whoa. Wild. Has He's anyone really done this with reflexes. success? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, has anyone? You wouldn't know unless you were the person on the receiving end and a slice of apple came out of your mirror. Right? Yeah. Like, how like, else would you catch it? I don't understand. <laughs> talk about FaceTime because then, like, you catch it, then you look in the mirror, there's a person you don't know. Do you throw it back at them? Like, what do you. Did you know that's actually why um, they named it Apple? why facetime apple because of the apple <laughs> what was that a bad joke or is that true that's <laughs> no, not true i was oh. saying like because you said facetime original facetime i said yeah that's why they named the company apple you know <laughs> okay anyway, that is it funny. doesn't it's literally it, the dumbest thing 
No, no, no. I took it literally and I was like, face time. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Just ignore me. Let's let's move Just, past um, it. Evidence that I will always blindly follow whatever you're I saying. I love that for me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, last thing I'm gonna say is that newlyweds are supposed to stand in front of a mirror together. Uh, this so get ready, Blaze. Um <laughs> oh. so so that their souls are bound together in the spirit world by their reflections. No thanks. That seems like a, a lot of pressure. Like getting married is one thing, but like binding your souls together for eternity, like <laughs> yeah, that's longer than marriage because marriage is just for life. But right, the like mirror a prenup is for does not. As far as I'm concerned, a prenup does not cover that part. Also, of the aren't you? Didn't they also just say that if the two of you stand in a mirror together, one of you is going to die yeah, soon? Th- That's exactly on. what I thought. I was like, are we not supposed to do that or what? I'm confused. It's also said to be bad luck uh, for brides to be to break a mirror. Um, and really anyone who breaks a mirror in Ireland is said to have up to seven years of bad luck. I have heard that one, seven bad years That's of bad luck. That's definitely a big one, yeah. And also there's other customs where like, at like a Jewish wedding where you break the glass to mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. good luck. So, right. you know, everyone's got their thing. Everyone's everyone got, got their, their flavor thing. with a mirror. Um, and then I wanted to tell you one last thing. I wanted to end again on fun facts about mirrors. And I just wanted to give you a couple. One is that the longest mirror in the world is over 20 miles long in Bolivia. What? Holy 20 miles shit. Long. Uh, then I wanted to tell you that the first uh, rear view mirror was invented by a woman. Hi, Barbie. Yeah, it was. And then what was the last one I wanted to say to you? Um, Juniper's, do you hear that? Juniper's throwing his entire body against the door like no i can't hear it at all he was meowing and it was annoying but i was like i don't think it's getting picked up and then he started hurling his body into the door and it's huh do you hear that no okay but speaking of hearing things the last fun fact i have for you is that mirrors can reflect sound waves not just light waves um they are known as acoustic mirrors and were used during during world war ii for detecting sound waves of the enemy (gasps) really that's fun fact i did not know that and that is mirrors 101 i want to take 201 right now <laughs> oh well hang on i have to do a bunch of research first i guess you have to take 201 first <laughs> first i have to learn how to build a fucking mirror and something about volcanoes first you have to so... know what sea glass is which i think right. you have to start from <laughs> the beginning i feel like i feel like mirrors not to sound like uh like a, a mirror nut but like I feel like mirrors are a lot harder than they're given credit for. I feel like yeah. thinking about just the thought of making a mirror, no, I all of a sudden feel trippy. like the dumbest person on earth. No, it's very trippy. It's like, ha. Like, I feel like if you get high and think about mirrors, it probably breaks your brain a little bit. Um, I, I also once learned from um, Vsauce, which is like one of my favorite YouTubers that I used to yeah, watch as a kid. I remember that. That, for, uh, that mirrors are actually green yeah i've heard that and that, that if you well. put enough next to each other and do an infinity mirror where you look into one you can see eternity just endless 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 it slowly gets greener and greener and greener and greener, and greener. whoa fun fact green lava that's where it all began oh we found yeah. our way back we always yeah, do we do and that's why um, i drink christine tell me job. why you drink this week Okay, well, first I have to let my cat in. I'm sorry. He really is hurling his entire body against the wall. I mean, it really sounds like Edgar Allan Poe, speaking of. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to go let him in real quick. I so apologize. And that's okay. um, while I'm standing right there, I have too. to pee. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, that's you know, okay. You get it. Stand by. We have to step away. Oh, Junie, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I go pee. I come back. He's already in my spot. And you can see his tail. Probably throughout the yeah, rest of the episode. Yeah, little tushy. Oh, no. Sorry about that. I got to oh, move no. this so Junie can get comfortable. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I whacked you. Did you clonk nose. him on the head? I did. I clonked him in the nose. I'm oh, sorry, bud. No. He does now not he's... seem perturbed. Oh, sweet little baby. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to tell you a story that is, uh, let's put it mildly, a fucking doozy. Um, I, mm. I will admit, the first time I learned about this case... It was a couple years ago. I cannot remember which YouTuber I watched and I couldn't really find the video, but I watched a YouTube and it might have been taken down. Um, But I watched a YouTube video about this case and I totally bought the kind of narrative that this YouTuber was telling me, like this true crime YouTuber. Um, And I feel like I had to re-educate myself on this case pretty intensely to like Mm -hmm. relearn everything and um 
let's just say I got kind of a one-sided uh, story when I originally okay. learned about it. And um, I have since learned that there's a much more to it than I ever thought or knew. And I am very, very curious because I'm assuming this might be the first time you've heard about it. Um, yeah. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts once I tell it. Uh, this is the oh. case of Darlie Routier. Um, I've heard her name pronounced Rudier, Routier, Routier, uh, mm. but I'm pretty sure it's Routier and they live in Texas. So I don't think it's Routier, but maybe. Um, maybe it was. And then they go, my name's Routier. Or my yeah. Routier, yeah. <laughs> so Routier is the one I've heard like the most often. So we're going to say Routier. Okay. And Darley and Darren. So you do you know this case by, you, by any not chance? Not even, not even a little. Okay. No. So it's also sometimes called the silly string case. Um, what? Don't know okay. that either. No. no. Okay. I know the smiley so, face. Yeah, the smiley face killer. Yep, that's the thing okay. too, but not the same. Um, okay. So Darley and Darren Routier met in Texas when Darren, who was 17, worked at the same steakhouse where Darley's mom worked. And according to Darley's mom, Darren approached her and asked about her beautiful daughter he'd heard about. And uh, her mom introduced the two. And Darley was 15. Um, and he said she walked in the room and I was just smitten. He just fell uh -huh. in love. And within four years, they were married. Darley gave birth to their first son, Devin, just about nine months after their wedding. So do I, I can't do math, but I can do that math. Okay. Um, Darren started a successful electronics company that made circuit boards, uh, and this is the 90s, so pretty quickly they find some success because mm -hmm. I'm imagining circuit boards in the 90s was um, like cutting edge, Not as right? easy of a go as it might be today yeah, for some people. right, right, right. Like there's, you know, this is the dawn of Radio Shack, like the heyday mm -hmm. of Radio Shack. Um, so he is making these circuit boards and this means they are starting to make quite a bit of money and neither of them come from money um, in their background so this was a pretty new experience for them so they bought a beautiful new house for their growing family in Rolet, texas and uh like i said they were new to having loads of money um and so they were known as being extremely flashy and um they basically spent and spent and were very open about how much money they had. They liked to show their wealth, you know. Um, they would, they bought a boat, they bought a used Jaguar, they, the, the car, not the animal. Um, they went used, on the, not the rescued. Used Jaguar. <laughs> they Could you please adopted. tell Gio that he, oh, we got, he's used. <laughs> we got him used. He was cheaper. But he used, was really cheap. So. <laughs> gently used. Um, <laughs> he, he was used. I checked his car fax. It was not pretty. Um, and so, <laughs> unfortunately, he was very cheap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they bought the car, the Jaguar. Uh, they went on family trips and cruises. Uh, they lived in kind of an uppity neighborhood. She would wear these like really like kind of body jewelry pieces. Um, mm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like they bought fancy I... watches. They were like those kind of people. Um, but they were really well loved in the community and like their neighbors had nothing but good things to say about them. Um, they considered them a fun young couple. You know, they had these cute kids. They had their second son, Damon, who was born just a year younger than Devin. So they had two boys. Um, Darlie was a stay at home mom and friends described her as fun, loving, caring. She was extremely active in her son's lives and her house was actually sort of, I mean, which I think you had this kind of experience where like her house was sort of like the home base, like all the neighborhood mm -hmm. kids would gather, right? And like yes. play there and all meet together. And she always took care of the her own kids, but also like was a mom to the other kids in the neighborhood. Um, kids called their house the in, the Nintendo house because of oh. course they had an elaborate game room. I feel like that's a very 90s like nouveau riche thing to like put a whole game, game room, room together it's like the dream yeah. right oh yeah um, to this day i want a game room i mean seriously i mean yeah me too i'm just thinking cool. about how i don't have a closet and you don't have a dresser but we want a game room so bad um <laughs> anyway <laughs> I, I guess i have a troll hole so i guess the game you could do happen. that is kind of your game room and i have yeah. this room full of full of haunted artifacts so i guess that's my game room maybe we just feel had like, like adult game rooms are you can think rooms. about how, like how some people like there's the the cinemax for ghosts of watching you know mm -hmm. through a 
a, a mirror or ceiling. If my room had a ceiling full of mirrors, they would just see me doing this in VR all day. It would just be <laughs> it would just, just be like slowly, turning, turning, just, just turning, <laughs> just standing in silence. And then and saying, turning. God damn it. I didn't get yeah. a tip from that bitch at the bar at the star bar. What's it called? Stargazer. What's it called? Uh, uh, the Star-head. game or the Star-tender. ship? Yeah, Star Star Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Which, by the way, uh, I do have a shift later on today, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about. It. I haven't been there in a while, so. All right, I'll uh, I'll speed things up. Um, so if you, you wouldn't mind, because there I can yeah. already tell that it's gonna it's gonna be a busy day. It's, it's gonna be a tough holiday. Yeah. It's you know. day, It's right. You're right. People are recoming from a lot of family. locals coming yeah. back home. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna have to, but you're gonna get so many good stories from. You have no these, idea, and there's these gonna interplanetary be that bitchy one. She's always there. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, the Nintendo house, um, because they had this elaborate game room, and Devin and Damon were very happy children. Uh, Devin was kind of the outgoing one. He loved to make people laugh. He wasn't afraid of anything. He was doing flips off the diving board. Like, the minute he start, learned how to swim, he was, like, yep. f- like very, like, crazy, fun-loving kid. Um, and Damon was the opposite. He actually felt he was more shy. He liked to stay close to adults for reassurance. And the routiers spent as much time as possible together. And from the outside, as it often tends to be, friends thought the family had a perfect life. But of course, behind the scenes, that is usually not the case for any family, Mm -hmm. Um, especially one that ends up in a true crime podcast. So (laughs) Uh what was going on is that in September of 1995, Darlie was pregnant with their third son, whose name, of course, we got Damon, Devin. Do you have a guess? Uh, Derek. Dylan. Drake. You were very close. Oh, thank you. Actually, okay. very close. Drake. So Darley, Devin, Damon, and Drake. And, uh, and, uh, Dar- wait, okay, sorry. Darley, Darren, Devin, Damon, and Drake. That's the whole family. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really kooky. There's a lot of, it. uh, a lot of confusing names. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A lot of D's. So, uh, Darlie was pregnant with their son, Drake, and she started to struggle with depression. And, um, you know, it was the 90s. It wasn't that long ago. But even nowadays, people are still learning about, you know, postpartum depression, um, prenatal depression, like just all the kind of mental health hormonal shit that happens when you are carrying a child and um, so back then, you know, this was probably something that wasn't necessarily taken as seriously as it might be nowadays, but she mm-hmm. was very, very deeply affected by it, um, as evidenced in a journal entry in which she wrote, Devin and Damon are growing so fast and I see myself getting older each day. Mm-hmm. I am now seven months pregnant and we're bringing Drake Routier into the world. I have had two dreams about death in the past several months. Mm. Both times I was hesitant to go, but when I did, it was such a wonderful feeling, one that you cannot describe. And both times I felt I was going to be with the Lord. Wow. So okay. these are where her thoughts are. Um, and that October, she also wrote about feelings that many mothers face as they're trying to find like a new uh, identity or like a new balance of identity, reconciling being, you know, your individual self and also mm-hmm. a mother, a parent. And she wrote the following. I really love Darren, her husband, with all my heart, but sometimes I feel like I'm missing something. I'm sure I have everything every woman could ever wish for. Maybe it's the excitement, things I used to do when I was younger, the thrill of not knowing, just doing whatever came up. I know I have a lot of responsibilities, but a little craziness once in a while sure wouldn't hurt. I want to grow old with Darren, but I don't want to feel as though part of me has to die to do it. I am young Mm. and I want to feel it. And that just makes me sad. And she got married at 18. And like, you know, I I have friends who face that as well, where they're like, wow, you know, I feel like I kind of rush, not, I won't say rush, but like maybe did this step earlier and then felt, whether it's true or not, but felt like maybe they missed Felt like a loss something. of their youth yeah. or something because yeah, they yeah, jump yeah. right or, into being a, a married couple. Yeah. Right. Like you're sort of skipping maybe something that your friends are going through and experiencing. Yeah. Missing a, missing a chapter of life is yes, yeah, yeah. a, a and, fair um, reason to uh, right, be right. bummed out. Exactly. And so after she gave birth to Drake, um, the depression as, you know, I feel like if, it, if you have this during your pregnancy, uh, it tends to really be exacerbated after the birth. Um, and she fell into a deep postpartum depression, which 
can be so, so scary. Um, on May 3rd of 1996, she was prepared to take her own life. Uh, she began an entry in her diary, and it was a suicide note to her three sons asking for their forgiveness. And this just, like, makes... It's just heartbreaking. She wrote... I hope that one day you will forgive me for what I am about to do. My life has been such a hard fight for a long time, and I just cannot find the strength to keep fighting anymore. I love you three more than anything else in this world. I don't want you to see a miserable person every time you look at me. Your dad loves you all very much, and I know in my heart he will take care of my babies. Please do not hate me or think in any way that this is your fault. It's just that I, and according to a friend, Darren walked in right as she was finishing this letter and she already had the pills out that she was planning to use to take her own life Mm -hmm. so thankfully darren was able to stop her you know before she made that move and the friend uh who who knew the story urged darley to get help and told darren you know you need to find a counselor for darley to to help her out and get her through this before she makes a a decision like that Mm -hmm. and uh unfortunately they did not take this friend's advice wow so they both recalled that it was just a few rough days and then she kind of recovered and said you know what no i've moved past past those feelings i'm okay now um but what doesn't help is that darley and darren were also under extreme financial strain and Mm -hmm. uh you know, that's why I kind of mentioned the way that they spent their money on flashy things, on big purchases, kind of not really knowing how to maybe save their money or utilize it in a way that would last. And so suddenly they are in debt. And at one point, I believe they owed, I think it was like 22000 um, but that was in the 90s, you know, and right, so right. I'm much higher now. Significantly but, more. So business had slowed down pretty dramatically. They owed thousands of dollars on credit cards and taxes. They were behind on the mortgage and their office rental space. And despite their financial situation, which was pretty dire, they were still planning vacations and trips and cruises. And Darren applied for loans to fund the trips, but because of his debt, was denied. Um, so friends said Darren and Darley began arguing a lot, and Darley just didn't seem like herself. Um, later, there would be claims that Darren said Darley cleaned obsessively but couldn't keep up with her sons. He allegedly talked about her postpartum weight gain and said Darley was exhausted and sick of everything. But Darren adamantly denied ever saying any of that when questioned. So we don't know if this is just like hearsay or gossip. But either way, on June 5th of 1996, their friend Barbara came over a little after five and noticed that the atmosphere in the house was very tense. Darley was extremely upset. She was pacing back and forth, uh, very agitated throughout the house. And (laughs) Barbara, I imagine, backed out slowly and said, I'm going to leave you two to work this out. (laughs) Uh, I'll give you a second. Yeah. <laughs> I think I walked into the Nintendo house at the wrong time. Yeah. So she, she's like, I just wanted to play Super Mario, but I guess things are awkward. Like, so yeah, I'm going to leave. The, yeah, Tetris will wait. That's <laughs> Tetris, right. What's a Pong? A Pong will wait uh, <laughs> till next week, I guess. Um, so Barbara left and decided to let them work things out. And what happened next is somewhat unclear. In the original statements, Darren and Darley both said they had an uncomfortable conversation about their finances, their cars, and their boat. And they were both upset. Darley was having trouble keeping up with the sons in the house. And that was the conversation that they originally said they had. But later, they both refuted that and said they never argued that night, despite the previous statements. And according to their final official testimonies, that night was calm. They had a regular conversation about stressful topics like any normal couple and then um, just, you know, kissed and went to bed. And Mm -hmm. uh, that was that. But the following night is when everything went tragically, tragically wrong. So Darren said of June 6th, 1996. When I went to sleep, everything was perfect. When I woke up, it's been a nightmare ever since. Hmm. So school was out for the summer. Six-year-old Devin and five-year-old Damon wanted to sleep downstairs just for fun. So they did that, like, classic camp out in the living room, yeah. you know, which just, like, such a highlight of youth, I feel Childhood, like. To, yeah. Right? <laughs> to and this, it's, there's some, To this day, like I still s- want my friends to come over and do that with me. I know. And I'm like, um, I, I'm... My contacts, where am I going to put them? I have medication. I'm old. My back hurts. Don't worry. I'm depressed about it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And then I I cause you to pray. It's all cyclical. Um, (laughs) But yeah, they camped out on the floor that night and Darley joined them and slept on the couch. 
Uh, meanwhile, Darren and the baby, Drake, who was really an infant, uh, slept in his crib upstairs. So according to Darley, oh, my stomach turns every time this part of the story comes up. Okay. According to Darley, she woke up at about 2.30 a.m. because her son Damon was pressing on her shoulder and she heard him say, Mommy. So in the dark, she saw the shadow of a man near the couch. He oh turned God. and moved toward the kitchen and she heard glass breaking. <gasps> she was still groggy, but she followed him into the kitchen where she saw a knife on the floor, which she said she instinctively picked up. The man escaped through the garage and Darley went back to the living room where she turned on the lights and found both of her sons, Devin and Damon, on the floor bleeding profusely <gasps> Wait, so this Hor and this horrible. person didn't hurt her we'll get there and okay. so literally the next sentence is it was then that she registered her own wounds as well uh which okay. she had no memory of getting because again she woke up when her son pressed on her arm right she had a cut on her neck and a cut on her arm and uh, we'll get into that a little more. Okay. But it appeared that she was suffering from amnesia about the attack. She just simply did not remember. It was like she blacked out a big portion like, of it. Like she like someone didn't... could have hit her in the head. Well, not she didn't have any head injuries. Um, it was almost like either a traumatic response or, as some people claim, a lie. So okay. let's get into it. Uh, can I, can I say really quick yeah, yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah before I forget this note, that it's, I mean, unless there was head trauma where she couldn't remember, I don't understand already how she didn't feel an arm and throat injury, but she mm -hmm. felt her son gently press on her arm. Yep. That is one of the crux. That's the crux of okay. a lot of the debate. Yes. And okay. that this is one of the most, as I've learned, one of the most polarizing true crime stories. Um, oh, shit. Okay. That's still debated pretty, pretty, um, thoroughly and pretty angrily by people on the internet and i mm. got swept up in some comments and went whoa people oh, shit. really okay. take this stuff really far well thanks for um, dragging me in with you i can't wait welcome. to publicly state my opinion okay <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh god it's a mess okay so they she realizes she has been injured as well um and it 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 appeared she had suffered from some sort of amnesia surrounding the attack um perhaps brought on by trauma perhaps uh a head injury but she didn't really receive a head injury so probably not that uh perhaps it's a lie uh it's unclear but essentially her exact memory of the timeline of when she had been stabbed and when the boys were stabbed is very foggy what she does know is when she saw the boys on the floor she started screaming Darren, her husband, woke up and came downstairs to find Darley in complete shock. He said she just kept shouting, Devin, Devin, Devin. He mm -hmm. saw his sons on the floor and got to Devin first. Darren tried to do CPR on Devin, but when he blew into his mouth, the air and blood came out of Devin's chest because the stab wounds had punctured his lungs. Oh, my God. It's really fucking horrible. Oh my so, god, that that alone is a traumatic event. It's on all top of incredibly, everything else. incredibly traumatic. So Darley called nine one one in hysterics, and I've listened to this call many times. Uh, she screamed, "They just stabbed me and my children. They just stabbed me and my kids, my little boys." And this nine one one call has gotten a lot of analysis, a lot of conflicting opinions uh, from people. Experts have had problems with the way that she's said, "My." my kids my boys but won't say their names uh mm -hmm. on the call you know just things that are kind of like not have not necessarily a, a smoking gun but but are right, kind of a weird look somewhat suspicious, suspicious or something perhaps and so there's been a lot of critique of that 911 call as well Meanwhile, Damon was lying on his stomach, and in the 911 call, Darley is heard telling her sons to hold on and be strong. Mm. In an interview, Darley said one of the boys, likely Damon, who was still somewhat responsive, said, okay, mommy, and those were his last words. Oh. It's horrible. It's horrible, and I'm so sorry. So he wasn't even, even, they weren't no. even, he was, okay. Yeah. 
So first responders arrived and Devin had already passed. Um, Damon and Darley were taken to the hospital and Damon was unfortunately declared dead on arrival, having succumbed to his wounds in the ambulance. Uh, they'd been viciously sh- stabbed. But Darley was also in bad shape. As I mentioned, she had a stab wound in her arm and she had a cut to her throat. And I, I, was, tr- I was kind of waffling on how to tell this story because there's so many different angles to come at it from. But I'll just tell you that the injuries she sustained were later described as superficial. Um, okay. And that was how prosecution uh, presented the evidence. And yet we know now, which is this kind of information that I was saying I, I didn't get until later, that actually, uh, and I looked up the photos, they're they're pretty horrific of her in the hospital. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Her stab wound in her arm went to the bone, like <gasps> went straight to the bone. Oh, shit. And okay. her throat was cut to only one or two millimeters from her carotid artery. Oh, and wow. she wow. had to be rushed into surgery. And, you know, one of the arguments, I'll just kind of spoil this part now, but one of the arguments was that she had inflicted this wound on herself to make it look right. like she'd been attacked, right? But, um, you know, to be a millimeter, two millimeters away from your carotid artery it's is something that's not cut. easy. To, a deep ass cut, also not not easy to like measure. Like I, you wouldn't necessarily be like, all right, great, I'll stop right before my carotid artery. Like you know, the average person wouldn't really know how to do that. Um, and what's more <sighs> is that the reason that the knife, which should have killed her, uh, the cut in her neck should have killed her. The reason it didn't is because a necklace she was wearing actually got in the way. And they had to surgically remove the necklace. And so it's not even like, oh, someone like meticulously sliced there. But the way that it was presented to me in that first YouTube video watched and, you know, to uh, more importantly, the jury was that these are superficial self-inflicted wounds is how it was presented. And this is where this is all getting very muddy and where people argue back and forth and back and forth about whether she could have done this or not. Well, do I, I don't even know, like, I don't know the rest of the story, so I don't know when to time my questions, but... Um, yeah, just go ahead. I know, I feel like it's hard when, I, it, when you don't know the whole thing. So, you can tell me to, you know, I'll tell you later, but um, could, are people, is there a camp of people who say that it was self-inflicted, but she, although it's usually men, was being a family annihilator and actually, I mean, she was already having suicidal ideation, so That's she so might as well just taking you the kids out? Yeah, that's so interesting you say that because um, I was listening to a few podcasts about this story just to hear what other people's takes were. And I love to hear when other people find like sources that are, not you know, on every other show. Um, But uh, on the Crime Junkie episode I listened to, it was a two parter and they mentioned family annihilators and uh, they made a good point that, you know, family annihilators are typically... It it doesn't really fit the mold of that because the husband and baby were still upstairs. Um, it it just doesn't quite fit that that kind of family annihilator trope. You know, family annihilators are almost always men. Um, but the financial strain also kind of plays into that, where you're thinking like, well, maybe, um, there's a burden. I mean, maybe they're a burden to her in her mind. You know, and I I, I don't know the rest of the story yet, but I feel like. Maybe because so many family annihilators are men, we don't have enough information on what female family annihilators would look like. But I I wonder if she was thinking after her last near attempt, she was like, you know, maybe it would be easier for my husband to grieve if he didn't also have to watch the kids or maybe I take the kids with me or something like something. Yeah. I don't know. It's. It's odd because I feel like typically a family annihilator goes for the children and the partner. Right. to like move on to a new life and it feels almost like yeah it like could why be. hurt the kids and not him yeah right like it feels like almost maybe they got in a fight and like this was a for him to suffer i don't i don't know i i don't know it yeah. sounds like they were in love though yeah it's hard because it's like it, every theory kind of makes sense and then kind of doesn't so it's like mm-hmm. there's not not one thing that really fits all of the clues all of the uh evidence all of the motives um it's it's bizarre it's bizarre um so darley was in bad shape um right so turns out 
I learned later that her injury went straight to the bone and her carotid was like a millimeter away from being cut, which would have killed her. So they rushed Mm -hmm. her into surgery. Um, There are photos of her in the hospital with bruising, like from, I think it's from her wrist to her armpit, like these thick, dark, horrible bruises. Um, And according to Darlie's sister, after her surgery, Darlie was groggy and just wanted to touch her son's photos and just weep. And uh, she kept asking, why my boys? Why my boys? And her her bruising from her wrist to her armpit was like really dark and, and disturbing. She had cuts on her hands that were consistent with defensive wounds from someone stabbing at you or from grabbing the knife as someone um tried to stab and it was on her i believe her left hand which kind of indicated it wouldn't have come from if she were stabbing with her Mm. dominant which was she was right-handed so you know it didn't seem like it was from stabbing herself it seemed like a defensive wound but other people as i learned online have said no those are paper cuts those are not defensive wounds she was just putting paper cuts on her hands and i'm like well i guess you can say whatever and we don't know so right right if everyone has a differing opinion on this um so the stab wound on her arm was also consistent with defensive wounds uh someone gets when they raise their arms over their face to shield themselves like the mm-hmm. bruising was deep and dark on that part of her forearms and darley described the attacker as a tall white man with long hair and a baseball cap uh, but it was too dark and she was too kind of out of it to make out a lot of details now at first the crime scene seemed to support her story so there was a cut screen in a garage window where the intruder seemed to have entered and exited the house and it had been cut from the outside there were bloody footprints and broken glass on the kitchen floor however the blood ended up being underneath the broken glass let me explain that better there was broken glass that she claimed had happened i think before the stabbings or before this person fled and then the way that the blood ended up being not on top of the glass it was almost police sort of took it and turned it into she was staging a crime scene by breaking glass after the attack that she had perpetrated so that was one of the kind of immediate clues so to speak that law enforcement decided pointed the finger at her and uh, there were also bloody fingerprints found in the house, um, including prints that did not match Darley, Darren, or the boys. Oh, and okay. The, yeah, so that's odd. I don't Something. know if they matched Barbara. I don't know if they checked Barbara, who was over playing fucking Super Mario earlier. Yeah, but, poor uh, Babs. Yeah. <laughs> Babs Jeez. is like trying to get the high score on Pong, and no one will let her. Um, in the hospital, investigators asked Darley questions about her husband, Darren, and she realized, like, shit, they might be thinking he did this. And so she made it clear he was not the attacker. It was not him. He was asleep upstairs. And a nurse in the hospital said she had never seen anyone as scared as Darley was when she was a patient of hers. Um, wow. The hospital right, so she's at was... least acting very well. Yes, yes. And I feel like that was never highlighted when this case was kind of in the media because she was pretty quickly vilified. And so it's interesting to hear this angle that she actually was like deeply terrified. Mm -hmm. And the hospital staff was really focused on keeping her safe because she thought maybe her attacker was still on the loose, you know, and was still after her. So in the following days, Darley was released from the hospital and the routiers buried the boys. This makes, (laughs) makes me cry. They buried them together in one casket, um, holding hands. (laughs) Jesus. I know. It's fucking awful. Um, at the funeral, family had to physically hold Darley up so she wouldn't collapse in grief. And at first, the public rallied in support for Darley and Darren. Like, n- n- they were really on their side. Obviously, this is such a fucking tragedy. But nobody knew that behind the scenes, investigators were quietly building a case against Darley, whom they had suspected as the perpetrator of this from the very start. Okay. Okay. So on June 14th, the routiers decided to have a birthday party at the cemetery for Devin, who would have turned seven a week after the murder. Oof. So Darlie's mom said to Darlie, let's just for one day try to get through it without crying a lot. She wanted her daughter to find a little joy and to celebrate the life of her boys in the wake of the tragedy. So the routiers and their friends attended this party at the grave site, along with several other children. They covered the g- boys' graves in balloons and other decorations and then they all smiled and sang happy birthday 
And then she got out silly string and began spraying it all over the okay. grave site. I think you can probably see where this is going. And they were laughing. And uh, a local news station, of course, filmed the entire event and aired it. And that's when things started to go very south for Darley because people were shocked by the way she reacted to okay. having a funeral at her son's grave site a week after their brutal murder. A birthday party. Yeah, a birthday party. And so she was, you know, smiling and laughing. And um, many people, and Sersha wrote this in here, like many people commented on the fact that she was chewing gum, which Sersha found odd. But like, I kind of get, I do kind of get that because I feel like. To fidget? Like a, an anxiety No, she was just thing? kind of like, you know, when like people are like smacking gum really loud and it's sort of like a, yeah. it feels very casual and like you're just shooting the shit, you know? Yeah. So she has like a big wad of gum in her mouth. And I know this is a lot of pe people's pet peeves. It's definitely one of my mother's pet peeves. But like she's just kind of like smacking her gum really loudly while she talks to the reporters. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they would have wanted us to be happy. And I know they're celebrating in heaven. And it, it was a little bit mm. like Whoa. a little too casual. Or a little not, too casual, little. a little too soon, a little too upbeat for most people to kind of swallow um mm -hmm. as like a grieving mother one week after the murder of her two boys you know it, mm -hmm. it felt it felt off and i will say like now i've really changed the way i think about this case but at the oh, same shit. time okay i yeah at the same time though i like still watch that clip and go Ooh. really yeah it's okay. not a good look you know she's joking she's spraying silly paint silly spray like they're laughing it up and like you know out of context admittedly there is more context which we'll get to but out of context at the very least it's not a good look and i feel like if you are in a scenario where you're trying to say hey you know what i just realized too she didn't know that they were looking at her as a suspect so maybe mm -hmm. in her mind she didn't have to show like grief or what, something the grief that she thought people would want to see like she it probably didn't even cross her mind um I don't so maybe think that's the issue. I mean, I also I'm not a parent and I I I can't imagine you know being that acting that fine for one day and one day only a week after to celebrate a birthday. I feel like there would still be really intense moments of sorrow and I also understand that people grieve differently, mm -hmm. but I yeah, I don't I don't know. I haven't seen the video so I don't know how it looks but think, i'm gonna take your word for it yeah i think there's just an inherent like discomfort when you watch it like an unease where you're like is it like the chris watts thing where he was just acting a little too yes. not concerned during the interview yes it's almost yes that's kind of the same vibe right okay. exactly it's like it's like yeah people grieve differently of course and we do talk about that a lot and it's very relevant in this case but it's almost like in a public show like that it just felt very like people i feel like people on the outside who didn't even know the boys were still grieving so mm -hmm. deeply and like to see you know a, a very kind of flippant like birthday celebration with silly string and like all giggling and like eating cake it just seemed very like too soon like not mm -hmm not the right vibe i don't know yeah, it's hard to explain because also like this is all subjective and again like search is right like there's no reason somebody shouldn't be able to chew gum when they're grieving their son's death you know but it's just something like about the interview where she's just smacking her gum really loud that just feels very like hello are you taking this seriously you know and right. again like there's more imagine if it later. was just like a like a nervous I know, under, and it might be like if it was like, just normal, and she's like, "No, I was and just it probably doing gum." It probably is, and like I feel like for most people, they're like, "What? What is your problem with the gum?" I just know people who have such an issue with that, like a sensory or like mm -hmm. a just mm -hmm. pet peeve about people smacking their gum. That I'm sure, like that, just rub people the wrong way. Um, so I just want to put that out there because I feel like it's easy to say, "Oh, well, why can't she chew gum, or why can't she?" Not against Sersha, but for people who've said, like, well, what's sure. the big deal for doing, like, a, f a celebration of life? And, like, of course. I just think there's a human side to at least me or some people who watched this, a lot of people who watched this and felt like... felt. There's the also ache, some like, people... This is not, by the way, me saying, like, well, some people are sensitive. That's not what I'm saying. But there's some people who are, like, 
maybe reading into the situation because of course you would like maybe yeah, there's yeah. like a some there's people like a are human just, yes like, we analyze uh, like yes. a heightened a heightened You're awareness that like what she's yeah. doing and if it's something especially that like annoys you or makes you uncomfortable, you're probably going to not look so highly upon it or, or also like I'll, I would, I would hope. And I think I'm fair to say that like a lot of us have never been in that situation. So none of, I think we're also playing the comparing game of like, what would I definitely. be like? And it's not that. So definitely. And exactly. It's like, well, when I grieve, I'm not going to spray silly paint all over my dead six year old's grave. And it's like, well, you know what? I, I feel you know like what? you're pulling the context out of it and you're not, you don't also, know that. You don't know this what you is, would do. This is something, I mean, I've talked about this before, but I, when on, on my grandparents' death days, I like to do something that I know that they would enjoy doing. Yeah. I could see if I had a six year old who just passed away and I was still like trying with anything I had left in me to celebrate their birthday, they would have yeah. wanted a silly string fight. Like I, I can totally see that. I think like the, maybe like the one-on-one -on -one interview with the gum smacking, I, I could see myself feeling weird about, but I, I don't personally feel any weirdness towards like trying to throw a birthday party on your dead kid's birthday. Like, yeah, I guess I it like was just that it was like six days later and like, it was such a brutal murder. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, oh, he died of cancer and we knew this was coming and like we just want right. to celebrate his life. Like and again, this is all so subjective and I'm not saying like, oh, well, if he had died of cancer, it would be okay. That's not what I'm no, saying. No, no, no. We're on I'm the same saying, we're on the same the, page. I'm I just, think I we think totally I'm... are. I think the public sentiment was like, what the fuck? Like we're on your side, but like what are you doing? Like cuz throwing the, this like big bash at your son's on... grave. The one-on-one -on -one, um, interview that feels, a, that sounds like it was a little cringe, that part I would, I can definitely see myself questioning more, but like, even if my mom, you know, or if anyone I cared about, knock on wood, please don't let this happen. But like if someone suddenly passed away, if you died suddenly, I would, even if it was the next day, I feel like I would try to be like, well, but Happy I also birthday. feel no? like you would, like, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I also feel like you might, you would probably do it in a more like, almost reverent or like emotional sad way i don't know maybe not yeah. but i feel yeah, like there, there would be say. like sadness right like at least some yeah and so i would it again, would be flip-flopping all day between like oh this you would really like this, this and then would crying mean something to you yeah. i wish you were here whatever and i feel like um it, 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 and I, I, I say all this because this is what the public was shown and there is sure. more context that we will get later. But okay, okay. from this, just this clip, it's, in my opinion, not a good look. Uh, okay. So I haven't seen it. And like I said, blind trust. I am going to send weird. it to you. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll send it to you afterward just uh, just out of so you can see it. And I'll, I'm curious what you think. Um, oh, we'll do that in the after chat. I'll show you oh, the video. You can tell sure. me what you think. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, after hours. So, content. <laughs> hashtag content. <laughs> really sad, <laughs> fucked up content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, in any case, um, the silly string incident happened and uh, the public tide kind of turned against Darley, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the prosecutor on the case later said, I was really taken aback by her demeanor. As a parent, I found it disgusting. And mm, okay. there's a lot of attack on you said character assassination or character attack earlier. And I like couldn't stop thinking about it because it is exactly part of this case. A mm. lot of character assassination is involved here. Um, By the way, I said that um, not re while recording. <laughs> no, sorry. It was earlier. We were just like joking about something else. <laughs> In and, case people and were said, like, why did they delete that? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Good point. Good point. That phrase essentially is what I was like. Ding, ding, ding. That's what this case is uh, a lot about about a lot a lot about forget it so english you know um not your first not the first uh a few days after the birthday party darlie and darren were called to the police station and they were excited they thought there was a lead um someone suggested they bring an attorney but the routiers believed like oh we're not guilty so we don't need an attorney not true not true not don't true. let anyone tell you that get an attorney if you're being questioned, okay? Just just for fun. Just try it. Just just for fun. Um, so they went in eagerly without reservations, thinking they were going to be told, like, there was somebody, you know, they found culpable. Or a suspect, at least. Okay. But when they got to the station, investigators separated them, 
took Darren to the house, asked him to walk them through the night of the murders. And after he did, they said the evidence supported his story completely. But they Mm. did not feel the same way about Darley. Twelve days after the brutal attack, they arrested her for the murder of her two sons. Darren's reaction was gut-wrenching. His mom said he felt like the boys died again, like when they arrested his wife. Yeah, your whole family's over twice. Just taking, yeah, it's like a whole nother blow. Yeah, exactly. Darren said at the police station he saw the investigators jump up and high-five each other in celebration when they arrested Darley. And Ooh, he was not sick tasteful. to his son. So not tasteful. He told police, you guys have the wrong person. You guys are making a big mistake. But they were on this route and they stuck with it. So the story made national news. People had these opinions. They'd already turned on Darley after the birthday party at the gravesite. But there was more fuel in the fire against her. Only a year earlier, Susan Smith, I don't know if you know that name, but she notoriously murdered two of her children by driving her car into a lake while they were strapped inside. (gasps) And this had just happened a year earlier. And so this was like people were primed to believe like a grieving mother. Hmm. Are you sure? Or did you Mm -hmm. kill your children? You know, because the story had just taken the media by storm. And the Susan Smith story, which I have not covered, but um, I will definitely one day. She told police a black man had hijacked her car and kidnapped the kids. And she went on a week. Fucking great. And she went on a week long kind of woe is me tour, publicity tour, asking for her children back. And then she outright admitted eventually that she drove her car into a lake and left them in the car. Um, and guess why? Because she thought they were in the way of uh, her new relationship with a man. Classy. So, you know, it happens. Fucked up, but it happens. And so people thought, well, maybe this is that same story all over again. And after nine days of a countywide search and public appeals to bring home Susan's children, she finally admitted it was her. Um, and Time magazine put Susan's face on the cover uh, with the headline, How Could She Do It? And so now America was primed to believe like a mother could brutally kill her children and lie about it on national TV. And this is kind of where people's heads were at. Um, so you, yeah. just just before I, I get confused, was that actually Susan or? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. That was Susan's. Sorry. That was Susan's case um, from oh, a year okay, before okay. Darley. I didn't know. Yeah, so that was Susan's gotcha. case before Darley. And so people, when Darley went on the news and saying oh man i'm so you know my kids have been killed people were like hmm god like, i didn't know if you primed. accidentally mixed up the name <laughs> sorry. no sorry yeah no they were primed to be suspicious of darley uh got it pretty immediately darren routier even told interviewers that the police brought up susan he said police told him she just snapped she's another susan smith like they literally just oh, looked okay. at her and said she's susan smith 2.0 mm. um and so Darley's trial, as you can imagine, was very polarizing. People picketed with free Darley signs outside. Others demanded the death penalty. And she was only charged with Damon's murder. And the murder of a child under six qualified for capital punishment in Texas. So prosecution felt it was the only necessary charge. But on top of that, um, it wouldn't qualify for double jeopardy because they could, uh, if they failed, they could try her again for her other son's murder. Uh, because it would be a different crime technically Mm -hmm. so they just charge her which seems a little fishy to me but whatever um they just charge her for the murder of her one son so that if that didn't go they could charge her for the murder of her second son i get it but like this is a little Mm -hmm. kind of a loophole so the prosecution had no confession no motive and no solid physical evidence proving darley killed her sons but they aimed to cast doubt on her story about the intruder Doctors testified that Darley's wounds were self-inflicted. However, the extent of the bruising and the defensive nature of the wounds made that difficult to believe. Some have called the wounds superficial, uh, and that is what the jury was told. But again, like it came out that it was really not superficial. One went to the bone. One almost sliced her carotid artery. She had to have surgery. You, You can look up the pictures. They're pretty brutal. Next, prosecution claimed there was no evidence anyone entered or exited the house through the window with the cut screen. And they looked at the mulch and the dust and said, there's no way, there's no footprints. According to them, the dust on the windowsill was undisturbed, as was the mulch in the flower bed outside the window. But in a later documentary, Darren demonstrated that the window is so low to the ground 
that the intruder could have just stepped in and out over the windowsill without stepping on it. Like, it's okay. such a low to the ground window. You wouldn't need to, like, hoist yourself onto the sill. Right. You could There's just no step disturbing over it. needed. Yeah. You don't need to disturb the dust. Exactly. He also showed cameras that the flower bed was seven feet away from the window. So just the fact that there was no footprints in the flower bed, well, it was seven feet away. Why would they need to be footprints in the flower bed to prove someone climbed in the window? It didn't make mm -hmm. sense. The intruder would have only had to step on concrete to enter and exit the window. In other words, the wouldn't have left the footprints. Um, so prosecutors also brought up a seemingly disturbing note uh, from the 911 call Darley made, which I mentioned got a lot of shade uh, and a lot of heat. In the call, Darley told the operator she picked up the attacker's knife and was worried that perhaps she had disturbed any fingerprint evidence that might have been on the handle and could have caught the killer. And, you know, this was odd because people said it was really bizarre that somebody on the phone with their children actively dying in front of them is saying, you know, um, oh, no, I picked up the knife. Like, is that going to ruin the evidence for, mm. you know, it, it, they said, like, that's just not a normal reaction. Um, however, uh, you know, the thought was common sense is no mother would be focusing on like, right. oh, should I have left fingerprints on the knife when your child is dying in front of you? But again, the context was missing because in the 911 call, Darley was crying on the phone about the attacker and told the operator about the knife she found. And the operator exclaimed, there's a knife. Don't touch anything. And Darley sobbed. I already touched it and picked it up. And then she kind of realized what the person was implying, oh. and she started crying about ruining potential evidence. So it wasn't like she just, like, popped into her head, her head and said, oh, no, right. I ruined the evidence. It was like, no, no, no. She was instructed, and she realized she had done something wrong, and it upset her in the moment. That makes sense. Yeah, I think so. And then there was the broken glass in the kitchen. Darley said she had heard a sound like glass breaking, but again, the blood was found under the glass. Um, investigators said the blood should have been on top if she had like bled on it as she was running after, you know, the attacker. Sure. Uh, but experts weighed in that unfortunately the crime scene was extremely contaminated before the investigation even began because Damon was still alive. And, you know, if in, in a scenario where victims need medical treatment on scene, Evidence just has to be displaced because priority number one is mm -hmm. treating the victims. It's like, okay, you know, what, we, we don't have time to figure out what to touch and what not to touch if we're trying to save someone's life. So the scene was compromised long before investigators even got there. So there's no way to say. Like, so it wasn't even her fault. No, or we don't know. There's just no way sure. to know if if it was disturbed. But there is a chance that it was disturbed, you know, and it was not her doing. Um. But it was originally, of course, like pitched as there's no way this could have happened unless she planted it. But that's obviously not the case. So the defense argued that, you know, the glass could have shifted in the chaos of the medic the EMTs arriving on scene. And then there were the bloody prints in the house that didn't match Darley or anyone else living in the house and presumably not Babs either. So they never found a match for those prints. Never found a fucking match for the bloody fingerprints. Okay. But they okay. appeared to be an adult's prints. Okay. On to the knife. If Darley's story is true, the murderer used his own knife to cut the screen and enter their house, but then grabbed a kitchen knife from inside to attack the routiers, which seems odd right. if he already He came would have with just used his own knife. You'd think so. So investigators found fibers on the kitchen knife that they said linked to the window screen. So they okay. believed that a, win a, a knife in the block cut the had, window had been used to cut the window screen so someone inside went outside to cut it. and did the cut yeah however turns out the fibers that appeared to be from the window screen actually also identically matched the brush that investigators used to dust for fingerprints and oh, these were like okay. microscopic fragments and they had they had dusted so the knives for fingerprints so it could very well have been their own brush the fibers from the brush, not from the screen. Mm -hmm. And actually, like a later attorney, Darley's new attorney, said he tested, I think, seven um, knives that had been uh, brushed for fingerprints. And four of them had those exact same fibers on them from the brushes. Oh. Okay. So it's there's Got a it. very good chance that that was not from the screen and that it was from just the evidence collection. 
So there was no blood evidence supporting that Darlie was stabbed on the couch. Her blood was found near the kitchen sink, and that is where investigators pitched that she had stabbed herself over the kitchen sink um, to, like, inflict her own injuries. Mm -hmm. And there was also blood spatter on the back of her shirt, which matched the boys and seemed to suggest it got there as she raised the knife above her head during oh, the murders. God. Wow, like but a full-on, like, the like movie Psycho slasher. in the shower. Yes, Ugh. yes. Horrifying. But the defense argued that the boy's blood could have ended up on her shirt at any point after the attack as she tried to save them, you know, if she's on sure. the floor, if she's trying to hold them, you know. Yeah. Darian also testified that Darley went back and forth between the kitchen and the living room to get wet towels as an attempt to just, like, help the boys. And it's not clear why she, like, wet the towels, but also she was in shock, you know? And so it's like, yeah. who knows why she wet the towels? She maybe was just thinking, like, I'll clean up their face and uh, who knows who knows what she's thinking but she wet the towels and that could have been where the blood came from in the sink maybe from mm -hmm. walking back and forth sure. um and the bloody towels found throughout the scene did support that so it was pretty clear that she had wet several towels and it could very well explain why there was blood in the sink so darren and darley left bloody barefoot footprints in the house but there was a bloody boot print in the garage and one okay. of the officers on scene was advised that it was likely left by an officer who tracked in blood, but that was never checked. Nobody ever, they just said, oh, it was probably just a police officer walking through and accidentally. They never even blood. checked? No, no. Okay. Well, yeah. That's, okay. Fucking sucks. No comment. Uh, so finally, a key piece of evidence was a sock, which I didn't even hear about in the initial telling of this story. Oh, really? I think, okay. I think maybe because it was like, I, the video was probably like five, ten years ago, maybe. So maybe maybe it just hadn't been released yet. Um, sure. Because it is a more recent update. But a key piece of evidence was a sock uh, from the house found in an alley down the road near a sewer, uh, like a sewer what? entry. How'd they even find that? Yeah, well, and it took them a while, but when they were, like, just looking, you know, in the neighborhood, they found this sock, and when they tested it, the blood on the sock matched Damon and Devin. It was found Wild. near a storm drain, and people speculated the murderer tried to throw it in the drain as he escaped. And the sock is so interesting because it just throws a huge wrench into the story. If Yeah, it's like, did they did, were these clothes taken and why was that thrown in the sewer but nothing else and did someone leave and then come back and right right the timeline yeah. doesn't work if it is darley because uh like just to show you how the timeline just does not work um so another important thing is that the sock had none of darley's blood on it it only had the boy's blood on it okay and she was bleeding heavily from her arm and hands so it would have been difficult to avoid bleeding on the sock when she carried it down the street if she somehow planted this like 75 yards away or whatever sure and it also screwed with the timeline because experts testified that damon could only have survived his injuries for roughly nine minutes darley's 911 mm. call lasted six minutes and authorities arrived within a minute of the call ending so oh, that shit. means Darley would have had only two minutes or less to finish stabbing her sons, go to the garage, cut the window, run out the back gate, 75 yards down the alley, barefoot in just a t-shirt, drop the sock without getting any blood on it, run 75 yards back, which is, by the way, a total of one and a half football fields of running, uh, shit. then cut her throat and her arm at the sink, clean up most of her own blood, stage the glass and knife, wake up Darren and finally call 911. It just mm -hmm. is so implausible that this would have occurred Unless the this sock way. was able to like travel on its own like a like a random dog in the house ran with it in its mouth or something. Like I like, Yeah. And they don't have pets. They don't have No, no, not that I know of. And and part of the issue too is like if it was by a storm drain and someone was disposing of evidence who knows what else is down that storm drain they never checked you know it could have been they could have dumped other stuff down the storm drain and the sock just didn't go all the right. way through but wouldn't it wouldn't they also want to that I, I feel like it that's like a weird accidental i know this isn't how it would go but it ha, in my mind it feels like something like oh it got stuck on one of the investigators and then it fell off when he was walking back to his car and then the rain washed it away like because i can't imagine if you're gonna throw things away to get rid of evidence i would think there's several other things beyond a random sock that would have 
been in, like vital pieces of evidence you could have gotten rid of. No. Well, I mean, like I the think... knife and everything. Yeah, that is true because the knife was left at the scene. Which so is wouldn't odd. they have like tried to throw? I would have tried to throw my the fucking weapon away if I was trying yeah, to get rid of evidence. Yeah. It's not a random piece of clothing. No, it's a cause... it's a fair point. It's a fair point. And like we don't know. Maybe there was other evidence that they did throw down the storm drain, and only the sock you know got stuck and didn't make it down. Um, but there is more about the sock. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry. That I've heard, which is just a theory, and there's no proof substantiating this but basically one theory is that perhaps it was used to chloroform uh darley and perhaps that is why she did not wake up when the injuries were inflicted perhaps this was a sexually motivated crime perhaps they looked in and saw darley sleeping on the sofa didn't realize the kids were on the ground until they broke in um perhaps they put chloroform on the sock put it on her face um after killing the kids had to dispose of this sock you know it's just a theory some people say well you would have smelled the chloroform there would have been a burn on her mouth some people Mm. say no chloroform has a really short half-life you would not have smelled it so you know i don't know um but that is just one thing that i thought was a little intriguing yeah Um, definitely intriguing definitely intriguing but the major question remained if Darley didn't do it, who would break into a house at random to stab three people with no apparent motive? Um, and Darley's defense claims it was most likely a burglary gone wrong because the night of the attack, neither of the Routier's cars were in their normal parking spot in the driveway. So it oh. appeared as if no one was home. About a week before the murders, a neighbor actually saw someone in a black car parked outside the Routier's home staring at the house. And when she approached the car, they sped off before she could talk to them. Perhaps someone was casing the house for a future robbery. And this was a very tight-knit neighborhood where people noticed unusual behavior, new people. The neighbor then saw the car again at 1 p.m. on the day of the murders and even made an official police report. Hmm. There is no evidence that the police followed up on the report or considered it as a lead in the murder case. Um, They just said, oh, must be weird coincidence. Anyway, Mm -hmm. uh, just let it be. So after the trial, Darren admitted he was so desperate to get out of debt that he actually had considered hiring someone to stage a break in and steal valuables from their house so that he could make an insurance claim. Holy shit. Okay. That's a bombshell. He said it was on his mind. He brought it up in conversation around several people, but decided not to go through with it. Brought it it up with several people? Mistake number one, my friend. Jesus Christ. Big mistake. And so he decided not to go through with it, allegedly, but it it could be possible that he set it up and it went terribly wrong. Um, Mm. He said originally it was supposed to be while they were on vacation. Maybe whoever got the idea in their head, saw that the cars weren't in the driveway, thought, oh, they're on vacation, I'll do this burglary. I have no idea. Um, But as for motive, there was speculation that Darley wanted to collect the boy's life insurance, but their life insurance was only a few thousand dollars, and Mm -hmm. the funeral alone cost much more. So the money went to the funerals, and Darren's life insurance policy was nearly $800,000, and he, he wasn't attacked at all. He wasn't harmed in the slightest so it doesn't make sense that she would kill her own kids and not her husband in that case right right ultimately the prosecution aimed to portray darley as a bitter woman trapped in debt and an unhappy marriage who didn't want to be a mother anymore um despite the 911 call the descriptions of her nurses as as being terrified uh she was described to the jury as strangely calm on the night of the murders which i'm like probably shocked but okay Um, And they said she didn't act the way a mother should when her children are murdered, which I would love to see you act that out, Mr. Mm -hmm. Policeman. Okay, fuck you. Um, They said she didn't try to save her sons, even though, like, she just saw blood and air coming out of her son's lungs when her husband tried to give CPR. So, okay. (sighs) Um, Witnesses were called to discuss the fact that Darlie, this is going to piss you off, too discuss the fact that Darlie had breast implants and blonde bleached hair and didn't go to church a lot with her children. <gasps> Who said this? Uh, witnesses on the stand were brought. The, 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 uh, the prosecution and those brought. And thi- those were the damning things they could say about yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically like we said character assassination. They were like, look at her. She went clubbing on Mother's Day. And she's like, yeah, with friends, like mom friends. Well, I'd fucking go clubbing on Mother's Day if I, I mean, had children. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's crazy. Uh, The prosecution even showed the jury 
the video of Devin's birthday party at the grave. And they told the jury, you see, this is not the picture of a grieving mother. But <gasps> here's where I tell you the context of that video clip, which I did not learn until recently. And oh, okay, apparently okay, okay, okay. earlier that day before this kind of birthday party, which, by the way, was not darlie's idea actually like it was someone oh. else's idea entirely i think her sister's and her sister also brought the silly string so it was not like her idea um but this part never aired earlier that day darlie and her family had a somber i think it was a two-hour prayer vigil at the side of the graves where she was just completely falling apart in pieces like spent two hours in full grief and uh okay like that, she didn't have any tears left right that oh. part was never shown so it looked like she just showed up and was like we birthday party silly string but like there were hours before that where she was just sitting and grieving and and falling to pieces and that part was never shown um and indeed the silly string clip ended up being the most damning piece of evidence in the whole case um because darley's mother said they ended up deliberating on the silly string silly string is not a lethal weapon but they asked to watch the jury asked to watch that video 11 times and it ultimately 11 11 times and it ultimately kind of sealed the fate of of darley on february 1st 1997 Dartley was found guilty and sentenced to death by lethal injection um, because her son was younger than six. And in the state yeah. of Texas, that is a uh, capital felony, punishment. capital punishment felony. Um, juror, one juror named Charles Sanford. By the way, the jurors, some of these interviews are so fucking infuriating. Like one woman is like, she had this blonde hair and this big boobs and wore tight clothes. And it's like, okay, you fucking woman i can't even woman like fuck off i feel like my really brain me off. flatlines at the thought of having to deal with someone like that. insanity i don't even, I insanity. Don't even have the words because i i i would have to like, dumb even, them down way even too if much. she was guilty like that's fucking irrelevant you know like it's still irrelevant yeah no it's matter still what irrelevant so one juror, Charles Sanford, said the jury watched the birthday party video 11 times during deliberation, and only later did he see the footage of the prayer service, and he actually said, had we been shown this other tape so that we'd been able to see the whole picture of what happened that day, I believe I would not have voted to convict Mrs. Routier. Mm -hmm. So, like, he literally said, if I had seen that, I don't think I would have, you know, pegged her right. as guilty. Oof, so there are those that's... believe that perhaps Darren himself was the murderer, or maybe he at least knows more than he's letting on, especially with the burglary schemes he had mm -hmm. considered. Um, in a 2002 issue of Texas Monthly, reporter Skip Hollinsworth wrote, when I told Darren that the complete truth might help get his wife a new trial, he insisted that he wanted to do what he could for Darley, quote, but I don't want to end up with some kind of bullshit charges brought against me either. I don't right. want to help her at the expense of my life. And the thought there, reading between the lines, is like maybe he does know something that mm -hmm. could get him in a lot of trouble and he doesn't even want to go there and risk, mm -hmm. you know, going to prison himself. So Darren and Darley eventually divorced in 2011, which Darren said was a mutually painful decision. And he ended up raising their youngest son, Drake, in a new home after the bank foreclosed on their house during the trial. And he routinely took Drake to visit Darley in prison. And believe it or not, as if things can't get worse, as a child, Drake was diagnosed with cancer, but has since recovered. Jesus um, Christ. I know. Okay, like well, I'm glad he's okay now. One thing after another. And fortunately, according to Darren, he has had a mostly normal and happy childhood against all odds, which is great. Against all odds. Oh, my God. Yeah. The case remains obviously extremely polarizing. People are either staunchly for Darley or against her. It's hard for people to stay on the fence about this one. Darley and her defense team have filed appeals over the years, but she remains in prison on death row. And as of as of 2023, she continues to maintain her innocence. Um, all along, her family and Darren have stood by her side and are positive that Darley is innocent and that somewhere there's a man who's gotten away with an unimaginable crime. And that's the story of Darley Root here. That's a good reason to drink. Good doozy. Also, my dad is downstairs, so I... Okay, you're fine. Have fun with your father, and um, thank you for really just finding a way to emotionally really, wreck all really of us and day. then bail. That's yeah, welcome. You're like a common straight man. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say about me. That's my claim uh, to fame. And that's why we drink. <laughs>